Hello, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and welcome to my live stream. I nearly stuffed up uh, my name in the intro there. You'd think I'd know it by now, but uh, you know, this is me. Um, testing, testing, one, two, three. Hope uh, picture and audio is all good. Um, looks a little bit dark to me. I don't know. So I'll have a look here. Uh, and maybe I can just brighten this up a little bit. Yeah, the smidge. There we go. Um, hello to everyone. Thank you for joining. Hello, Distro Hopper 39B. Trina is here. Hello, Dana is here. Uh, Zombie Geek 33. Uh, Steve is here. Hot Rod. Thomas Armstrong. Uh, okay, we're still working through, working through, working through. Yep. Okay, there we go. I think I've covered everyone. Um, everyone who is currently watching at the moment, thank you for jumping on and joining in. Um, people must be getting a little bit sick and tired of Macintosh SE30s because that just seems to be all I do at the moment. Um, actually, that's not true. I did. I've got a, um, a, a what do you call it, 6500 or a PowerMac 6500 over there. Um, so uh, with some terrible um, uh, trace damage, uh, I might do a little bit, a bit of that afterwards. But I've got to sort out this SE30 first. Uh, this is a new customer who sent this to me. They had a crack at uh, um, had a crack at uh, recapping this themselves, and um, they have just still, I think, got SEMA CMAC situation. For those who don't know what that is, there's uh, uh, hello Christopher, uh, hello Sam. Um, so uh, yeah, so anyhow, I've got this this little guy here. Uh, what I like about this one is that uh, it looks to me like they've got uh, at least fours, maybe even 16s RAM sims here. So when this does work, it's going to be well and truly, truly cranked up. This one is a really good lesson for people sending boards. The person put this in a bag, and I think I think the problem was this. Sorry, in a box. I think the problem, they put two boards in the box. Uh, one was an LC3, which I want to talk about in a second. And the other one was this SE30. And I think they use some of those, you know, those packing materials that are like little air bubbles. Um, and I suspect that one of these, you know, little pins or something has popped some of those air bubbles along the way. And so it ended up essentially with very little padding inside the box. And these boards were bouncing around, hitting each other. And the this, the ROM sim got knocked out of its holder. And this RAM, this, this, this RAM sim got knocked out of its holder and it's actually snapped the plastic here where it's got knocked out. Now it's not the end of the world. I mean, this, this, it will still run. It's, it's still held on on the other side. But the big problem is that um, this is something that could have been completely and totally avoided. Uh, when I send boards back, um, I wrap them up in bubble wrap, you know, like about seven or eight times and then put them together and make sure that they've got absolutely no give whatsoever. They, they mustn't move inside the box. And when the guy delivered this to me and handed it over to me, I mean, I could just feel the boards bouncing around inside it. And I, I, was, I thought this is not going to work out well. And there could actually be extra bits missing off these. We'll have to see when uh, I'll give it a close look in a moment. But yeah, rather disappo disappointing. Um, I had to obviously let the customer know. I took some photos of it so they could see what it looked like. I need to make sure that they know that you know this this has happened in transit. Um, you know they they're very uh, understanding, and I think they were just disappointed with themselves that they didn't uh, they didn't pack a little bit better. Um, so who has just come from uh, from Mike's stream on Mike's Macyak? Who uh, he hit three hundred. Uh, uh, 300 subscribers, and so he just had his giveaway uh, a little, a little, a little moment ago. I can't. What was the name of the uh, the winner? Does everyone, anyone remember? It's Andrew, someone or other, who uh, who won the uh, the Mac laptop. I can't even remember what sort of laptop it is. I tend not to pay much attention to the uh, the th things that have been given away because I'm in Australia. I know that even if I win them, I'm probably not going to get them. Edward White, Edward White. Um, uh, congratulations to Edward White. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, so you need to get in touch with, uh, Mike from Mike's Macyak and, uh, claim your prize. Um, okay. Now I feel like I'm too bright. I feel like I'm bleached out. I just can't win today. Can I? Cause the other thing is because I'm, I'm, I'm very shiny today. Um, Dana does stuff is here. Hello and hello. OA and hello, Madeline. 
uh, smash that like button. <laughs> the whole thing goes like this. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, thanks for joining. If you like the video, please smash that like button. Um, right, okay. Uh, video is fine, Bruce. Maybe to you. Maybe to you. Not to me. Hello, Captain. Color balance look good, looks good to me. Oh, that's good. Oh, excellent. Good, good, solid flesh tones. Um, uh, so yeah, just um, I, I just so in case people weren't aware of this, Dana has actually done some stuff. So you know, it's it's it, it is now factual. It's not just you know hypothesis. It's uh, Dana did actually do some stuff. It's a few sort of synchron audio synchronization issues, but. Uh, uh, but ultimately, he did go through his collection and bits and pieces and all that sort of stuff, and it was good fun. So jump onto his channel and catch up on that one, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come. Uh, Bill G, hello. Uh, SadMac356, hello. Um, have I missed anyone? Did I say hello to CapTech? If I didn't, hello, CapTech. Um, okay. Speech is always lagged. That's just how you talk, is it? <laughs> Uh, I guess I smashed the like button. Oh, you smashed the like button too hard. That's not how it's done. Um, all right, okay. So let's just have a quick look here. We'll see how many. Food. I've got seventeen on here at the moment. Um, it's me just waving goodbye to someone. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're um, the the person who sent me this board has saved me a fair bit of trouble because they've already taken the caps off. So that part of today gone. It's just going to be cleaning. Um, let me just, let me just read the description of the, uh, of the repair, excuse me, from my repairs. And I'll also change the status of it from, uh, received to in progress. Uh, hello, Action Retro. Welcome to the stream. Um, okay. Now, let me just have a look here. Um, have you added any more um, videos to your, um, uh, what do you call it, your, um, the cursed SE30, uh, um, Sean? I'm just curious because I'm, I'm really curious to see what you end up doing with that guy. Um, right, so oh, I'm uh, currently in a situation here where the gigantic fig tree, which overhangs this shed, um, sorry, studio, <laughs> uh, is um, the it's fruiting, and what often happens is not all of the fruit goes good. Some of the fruit just sort of shrivels up and then falls off the tree. And when they land on the roof, it scares the hell out of me. <sighs> okay, did I oh, did I keep that cap in my last stream when I was doing I think the two SI and that cap blew up? I think I kept the exploded cap because it just looks spectacular. Um, I had another one do that to me the other day too when I was working on. Uh, the 6500. Um, right, let me just have a quick look here. I'm going to see 30 that I got about a year ago. Originally, it had a pretty bad flicker. Okay, now I, they've sent me a, a picture of that flicker. but So I decided to recap it. After the recap, I was getting horizontal lines and a death chime. Okay. Um, pretty bad at soldering, and the caps I got were slightly too big for the pad, so they uh, overhanged and weren't quite, quite sitting right. Okay, so. Uh, so asking me to have another crack at it, see how we go. So that's all fine. The fact that it did work before they recapped it is, 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 is very promising. That's always nice to know. Now I just need to get over here. I've got this ultrasonic cleaner behind me, which I should mention is running quite reliably now. And I'm uh, in the process of working on a video explaining not just how I made this, but also what ultrasonic cleaners are and how they work and a few tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff. So that's a video coming soon. The script is already written. I'm just doing some refinements to it. Oh, here's the cap. Here's the exploded cap. Whee. Whoa. Whoa. Um, and uh, yeah, and so yeah, that ultrasonic video. I just released a video yesterday. I think probably most of my followers have watched it because it's had a whole stack of views it's it's probably one of the better performing videos i've done in a while about an amiga uh amiga 600 and 1200 um mod that you can do in order to uh, uh sort out the composite video output so if anyone wants to have a look at that or anyone's an amiga fan out there 
All right, let me have a look here. Uh, that's a cool shirt. Thank you very much. Um, okay. I'm actually in the process of ordering some more shirts. All my shirts are starting to get a bit worn and tired and stuff like that. So, And I, I like shirts with silly things on the front. I just always have because I'm a, 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 an adult child. Um, okay. Uh, it's ready to be returned to Sean. My fault on the delay at that end. Oh, Steve. You know, destroying the creativity. What's going on? I'll be back soon. No worries. I can understand that. Uh, yeah, these aren't those sorts of figs, I'm afraid, uh, Trina. These are little figs that are about that big, and uh, they don't taste very nice or anything like that. They're teeny weeny little figs. Um, it's great for animal life. I mean, a lot of birds come and eat them. We get fig birds here. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and uh, lots of parrots, and of course, bats at night, because the bats come and eat the fruit. So it's actually, um, it's a really nice thing to have here. But, you know, so the downside is that a lot of the fruit... On, on the branches doesn't properly mature, it doesn't properly ripen, then it just falls off. And they're only, they say they're only about that big, but they're falling from a very big height and they just land on this metal roof and bang, you know, freaks me out. Especially when I'm doing stuff with high voltage and that, and you're just working on it and then a fig just lands on it and you go bang, it's going, whoa! Okay, um, righty, 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 righty. Uh, there are two, two, C two CX motherboards for sale in North America. 89 Canadian plus shipping on Eagle Bay. Mm. Yeah, that's too much for boards, I would say. Just boards. Um, uh, to build my own ultrasonic cleaner, I'll definitely give that a look. Also, Amiga for life. <laughs> Good on you. Um, as I've said before, I don't discriminate. As long as the computers have got a Motorola chip, I'm fine. Um, Mr. Fahrenheit, hello. Um, finally caught a live stream at the beginning. Well, not right at the beginning, but close to the beginning. I haven't actually started doing anything yet. Um, da -da -da -da. Ba -ba -ba -ba. fifty dollars for you, US for you, Mac eighty four. <laughs> um, I can I can I just tell you by the way, if the, if those two boards were for sale in Australia at that price, I'd buy them at the blink of an eye, because that that is actually a really really good price in Australia. But um, I've been listening to all of the Mac Yak guys, and they're always whinging about how every, every expensive everything is, and have made up their own mind about what the price of things should be. So. <laughs> oh dear look out for steve's price guide coming soon okay okay we're good i'm just checking up on the chat here make sure i didn't miss anything uh that's what the owl looking box is see that's what i said as well this is the owl cooling system that's what i've called it um, I originally built this just without this. It was just uh, basically just this vent at the front. I left the vent at the front just so, to help keep it cool. And then what I found when the, with this was running is the uh, ultrasonic transducers inside get insanely hot. I mean, really, really hot. So I thought I better put in some cooling. I had these leftover 240 volt AC cooling fans from a previous project. So I just took them out, grabbed a bit of wood, piano hinge, little clip here to hold it in place. I originally set these up so that they were, you can see that the fans don't quite line up with the holes. And there's the original holes that I drilled. When I put those fans in, this thing wouldn't open. So I had to lift them up a little bit. Um, but this thing was not properly engineered. This the whole thing was built kind of on the fly because I didn't really know what I should be building. Uh, and it, with the benefit of hindsight, I can see a few things I could have potentially built a little bit better, but it's all right. Um, I bought four uh, drivers, you know, sort of uh, power supplies, and two of them failed. I have repaired them both, and so far it's it's been running quite reliably since then. So, but, you know, cheap uh, rubbish from overseas. Okay, I'm going to turn this off before I actually start boiling the water. I have a uh, uh, immersion heater there that's been heating that water up, and if you leave it in there too long, it will actually eventually start simmering so we don't want that okay let's call it steve's american price guide yeah and then just take all those figures and double them and then you'll have it'll be as um, australian price guide um moving out soon got 30 max now no idea how to get them in a 200 square foot apartment yeah i live in a tiny house i live in a very small three bedroom house and i work from home as well so one of my um, one of my rooms is, uh, is permanently as an office 
and it's quite a small room. And then the other room, which is a spare room, that's my wife's office at the moment because she's working from home at the moment too. And then the other one is our bedroom, and that's kind of it. At the moment, uh, I've got three sheds, um, and I've got things in there. It's just, yeah, I just don't have enough space for stuff. But I keep getting these awesome computers. I don't want to knock them back. So, um, uh, better job than I ever could on your clan. Well, thank you for saying so. Um, so I, got, I, I unfortunately didn't get enough video footage of me building it, but I did take lots of still photos. So that's what I'll be putting in the video, mainly just doing a whole series of still photos. And I'll do a nice Ken Burns effect zooming into them, giving a little bit of motion. It'll be great. It'll be great. Just you wait. I'm going to get an Emmy for it. A YouTube Emmy. Um, Chris Gray. Howdy, Bruce from Ohio. Howdy, right back at you from Sydney, Australia. Um... It's, got a, it's called Get a Storage Rental Space. How about I already have a storage rental space that's full? How about that? How about that? Cop that, he says. Um, yeah, so I need to actually get into that rental space and I need to, because it was only bought as a very temporary thing and that, that temporary thing we've now had for over a year. I need to get in there, pull everything out, put some shelves up in there, you know, because, uh, and throw some stuff away. I carumba. Yeah, I know. Actually, I think I might actually go there today and pull out some of my old software and archive it. I was talking to the guys about this the other day. I sort of I put a lot of this stuff into storage, and then I got the uh, I got the uh, the collecting bug again. I had it before, but I got the collecting bug again, and a lot of the stuff I'd moved into storage, and now I want to get it back out of storage. <laughs> uh, oh, I was talking to Nick. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. It was presumptuous of me to think you were talking to me, isn't it? Um, just for anyone who hasn't watched the stream in a while, I recently built this thing here, which is my little stand for logic boards for the work in progress that I have at the moment. Um, and of course, I have done a little bit of cleaning and I moved these PowerPoints and stuff like that just to have the layout of the room a little bit better. I've made some room over there for putting some bits. So all of the crap that I used to have on the floor is now gone. It's great. I'm loving it down here. It's awesome. What I'm not looking forward to, and I don't know what I'm going to do about it yet, I'm not looking forward to summer. We're in spring at the moment. It's just starting to heat up, and the weather at the moment is just magnificent. It's beautiful. You can just get outside and enjoy it. But uh, we are heading into summer, and I, at that time last year, I wasn't doing live streams. So uh, now I am doing live streams. I don't know what I'm going to do live streaming down here when it gets really insanely hot. You know, when it gets into the 40s or, you know, sort of uh, over, over 100 degrees in the Fahrenheit's, um, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have an air conditioner down here. I've got a fan, but that's it. So we'll just see what happens. You can sit there and watch me sweating on live streams. All right, so let's just have a look at this SE30 under the microscope. We need to uh, move on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's do some focusing. Focus. Focus. And then I will focus to make sure that I can see as well. I have the primary focus here on the side here, which basically just moves this whole head unit up and down. And then I have this little secondary, what do they call it, diopter focus up here. So um, I can uh, make sure that these two focuses match. Now, let's have a look at this. As, as I said before, this person has already taken the old caps off, so that saves me some trouble. Uh, the danger zone is, of course, this area up here. We've got the sound chips. Um, actually, I had someone uh, the other day with a problem with an SE30, and I think the problem is with one of these two guys. These are the uh, uh, VRAM chips. I've got stacks of these. I, I, when I needed one, I jumped onto eBay to buy some, and this guy was literally selling, I don't know, 100 of them. And I said to him, look, I don't really want 100, but I'd, I'd be happy to take a lot, but can you possibly split this up into smaller bunches of VRAM chips? And he said, yeah, sure, no problem. So he then did a new listing with, I don't know, 50 or something like that, and I bought those. So I've got a whole stack of these VRAM chips, and which is good because I think they're all going to start dying. Something to look forward to if you have an SE30. Ah, dear. 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, hmm. Full like here at the moment for the next week at least. Yes, I mean, it, these are the times it's great. And I tell you, it's great for the chickens. The chickens are laying eggs like crazy at the moment. I'm getting like five eggs a day at the moment. Um, frost warnings here in Ohio. Crikey. It's a bit early for that, isn't it? Uh, but then again, I suppose out here, I mean, we've already had, you know, some pretty warm days. Uh, 
I'll have to look for those VRAM chips. <laughs> you have to try and keep some on standby. And look, it probably makes sense if you are going to replace these chips to put sockets in as well. Take the old chips out, put sockets in, and then you just put the new ones in there. Uh, it's certainly what I would recommend to anyone with a 128K or a 512K. If you have any of those of those RAM sims go wrong on that, and they do. And, they, and one of the great things about the 128K and the 512K is they tell you they've gone wrong. Switch them on, you get a sad Mac, and it tells you exactly which RAM chip has gone. Uh, they even tell you if more than one is gone. It's fantastic. So anyhow, whip them out, put in a socket, and then put in a new one so it's easy to replace them the next time. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when opportunities come up for these chips, I'll tell you, this is, this is an interesting one. I had someone talking to me about this just yesterday. This little guy here. This is a real-time clock chip. It's upside down. And um, these fail. Uh, and of course, once they fail, your computer won't keep time properly when you switch it off and stuff like that. Sometimes it won't even keep time properly while it's powered on. Um, but uh, this uh, this is this is not like your normal real time clock chip. I've had so many people say, "Oh, real time clock chip? Yeah, you can buy replacements." This one's different. It's got Apple written on it. It does different things to a normal um, you know real time clock chip. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Fahrenheit. For that two Canadian dollars, I think we're almost on parity with uh, with uh, with Canada, so that's probably around about the same as two Australian dollars. So thank you very much for that. Um, right, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something a little bit sneaky here. I'm just while I'm actually on the stream here, I'm going to jump onto the interwebs and see if I can actually find someone selling these chips. Because if they are, I'm going to buy them all so no one else can. <laughs> I did that with the, I did that with the sound chips. I bought every sound chip for the old Color Classics that I could find. <laughs> uh, Justin Morgan, hello. Thank you for joining the stream. Okie uh, dokie dokie. Let's have a look here. Um, I'm going to just quickly look up this, oops, this code and see if anyone has it. I'm guessing they won't, but dash. Okay. Searching, searching, searching. Inquiry, inquiry, inquiry. Yeah. So no one actually says they have them. Just they say inquire. And if anyone ever falls victim to that, just be aware that there are lots of companies out there that you do a search for a particular product. Oh, Jesse Stevens, thank you very much. Australian $5. I know that's worth Australian $5. Um, so with the... Um, um, yeah, there, there are... Just for, just for some awareness... Um, the um, you know I didn't share the link to this on any of the uh, Facebook groups so this is people that have just basically turned up I guess probably from notifications and stuff so thank you to everyone um, I probably should have shared it on one of the Facebook groups but um, I was too busy watching Mike from Mike's Mike's Mac Shack Shack Mike <laughs> Mike's Mac Shack I was too busy watching his live stream when he was giving away stuff um, so. Keeping, keeping up the energy. Um, Saturday morning here. That's great for energy, isn't it? I had a good sleep last night too. Caught up on a fair bit of sleep that I've been missing out on. Um, so, yeah, there are these websites where, you, let's just say you're looking for a chip, some sort of component, whatever, and you've got the code off it, and you do a search for the code, and it comes up with this website saying something along the lines of, you know, this is the product, this company has some, or something like that. Uh, you press a button for inquiry. You put in your name, you put in how many of the components you are looking for, and you put in a price of what you're expecting to pay for it. You don't have to put that in, you can leave that blank. But you basically press that button, for anyone who might have done this before, and the moment you then press that button, you will then get flooded with emails from Chinese component companies, flooded with them. Um, and you'll all get these, these emails from people saying, hey, are you looking for this component? And you say, yes, I am. And they go, okay, we'll check. And then they go away and they come back and they say, sorry, we don't have it. And you think, I submitted what I was looking for. Why didn't you just search for it first and then only get back to me if you have it? 
rather than, you know, I mean, what is the point of me actually sending a submission? They fill you with false hope. They come in and they go, hey, are you still looking for chip 392-4416? And you go, yes, I am. And they go, okay, we'll check. And then they come back to you like, you know, a few hours later and go, we don't have it. Thank you. Is there anything else I can help you with? And it's, um, yeah, I made that mistake. Uh, but anyhow, as it turned out, one company said they did have them, but they were asking obscene prices, ridiculous amounts of shipping, um, a PayPal surcharge, and they had got all sorts of really bad f feedback and stuff, and they'd had all this stuff, stuff, and there were people basically saying that they'd received components from them, they weren't genuine, and that ultimately they were basically getting hold of chip packages, empty chip packages, screen printing them and then sending them out and this is the thing i said to them can i see a photo of the component and they said we'll send you a photo of the component before we send the product out and the reason why they can't send you a photo is because they haven't made it yet so only once you've then handed over a huge amount of money they then manufacture this fake part and then send it out to you so um yeah, anyhow. But anyhow, I found I then did find another source for these chips and I managed to get hold of a whole stack of Color Classic sound chips. I've got 20 of them now, so I'm all set because they fail a lot. All right, boy, oh boy. Did I go on a slight sidetrack there? All right, so this is the area where we normally have problems with these uh, computers. We end up with, this is SE30. It's sort of upside down at the moment. I normally have these around the other way, but um, at the way it is at the moment, the, uh, uh, the ports are down. Um, 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 there's the startup, there's the reset buttons, and then this is all your video chips. So the areas where you normally have problems, see this board looks really good. I don't think I'm going to have any trouble when I recap this, because I mean the only, you've got this little guy here, it's a little bit black, but I'm, I'm going to virtually guarantee that that guy has still got copper there. Just scratch the coating off, see me scratching. There's a great big hair on here. It's certainly not mine. It looks like a pet hair, actually. It looks very thin. It doesn't look like a people hair. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, it's gone now. There's a bit of it. Okay. Ooh. What do we think about that? What say you? Viewers, what do you reckon's going on there? That is a good old fashioned juicy trace break. Ah, when it's black like that on the trace, is it corroded for sure? Or are you scraping it off to check? I I'm scraping off the corrosion ultimately. So I'm doing one of two things. Uh, you know, I'm doing. I, I am doing two things. I'm ex I am checking for things like this because it, the whole thing can be black and it might be fine or you might have a little section of it like this which is completely eaten through. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm wanting to see if there is still copper there. That's what I'm doing by scraping it. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm trying to scrape that blackening off to try and halt that corrosion process. I'm trying to scrape away the blackness, which is the corrosion, which has the potential to just get worse. And then I'll re-coat it. I'll either coat it with solder or I'll coat it with um, with um, UV solder mask. So, uh, Is it possible to make new copies of some of these chips? Um, I'm sure people are. Uh, I know people are. I know people in China are making copies of chips that do work. I don't know they're some of them I don't think are necessarily as reliable as others, but I do know that some places are actually making copies of chips. So that's a big yes. Uh, is this Grumpus creation? What did I do? I'll get mad. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit behind on the chat here. Um, I already had been... Okay, yep. Yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely broken. There's no doubt about the fact that it is broken, and we will have to do a little trace repair on that. So that's all fine. Um, good to find it. Um, so these, as I say, these are the areas around here that we normally see this kind of gunk. With this one looking as good as it did, I didn't actually expect to get a broken trace. But you know, they, these computers always like to surprise you. 
Uh, I usually get some problems around here. I've got some nice green here. Green. This is certainly going to need to spend some quality time in the ultrasonic. Um, having a looky looky. We always often have problems around here. There's UE8. Just UE8. Um, but he looks really good. I mean, wow. These guys are spotless. Uh, the person obviously got to this fairly, fairly quickly. Um, yeah, he's good. Um, 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 Alright. So, now, uh, I should also mention that, I have mentioned this before, but there are different variations uh, of this board. This is an SE30 board. There are a few different versions. This particular version is the uh, later version. So I don't know exactly what year this came out, but it is certainly one of the later ones. Uh, it might have a date on it somewhere. Copyright 1989. Um, and the reason I know it's a later version is because, first of all, the chip is not socketed. You can see it's soldered directly onto the board. It's not the chip that has that little gold section on the top there. This is actually all black. Uh, and then the other reason I can tell is this capacity here, C12, is on this side of the ROM SIM. If, if this was the earlier version, that capacitor would be down here, right down there underneath the ROM SIM. So it doesn't really make a big difference, but you know, um, this is the later version of the SE30 board. All right. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. 20 poons. Thank you very much for that. Hi, Captech. Love the videos, love the streams, soldering guides, and your engagement with viewers. Get yourself a beer, coffee, tea, or whatever tipple, tipple takes your fancy. Well, thank you very much. I like most of those things. Um, I, um, I, am, I am a beer, coffee, and tea drinker, and wine, and spirits, and... I'm not particularly fussy, actually, as it comes to it. Um, I like a bit of champagne. Um, what else? Yeah, really not that fussy. Uh, okay, I'm going to take all these things off uh, and put them in a little baggie, and then I'm going to write down the uh, a good Moscato. Look, I get that toady Moscato is a little bit on the sweet side for me, but I'll still drink it. Um, I'm generally more of a uh, Semillon or a Sauvignon Blanc or a combination of the two, Semillon Sauvignon Blanc, I quite like as well. Um, that's probably my preferred poison. I don't mind a good Vidello. Um, I'm definitely a white fan because uh, red wine tends to give me uh, acid reflux. It's the tannins in it, you see, it's very tannic. Um, all right, so this is, yeah, what's going on with Jay? Where is Jay? He's. Uh, He's going to offend me. Not that he cares. 29 viewers. 29, thank you very much. Okay. Um, don't forget to like the video. Thank you. Yes, smash that like button. Okay, I'm going to take these Ram Sims out, which freaks me out because they're these plastic holders. I actually had the last SE30 that I had here had little the metal holders on here. So it's just so much better. I don't think the metal ones fit the same. I've got, I've got some here because I've pinched off other boards. I don't think they line up. I'll check. No, they don't line up. Piffle. I would love to get hold of some metal ones to replace these plastic ones. So ones that fit in the same hole as these plastic ones, but with little metal clips on the side. All right. Okay. We're just now going to... Be super careful. I'm doing this on camera so everyone can see that I'm being super careful and I'm not being careless. I'm not rushing it because if I do break it and then someone goes, oh, you weren't careful. I can say, you watched the video. See how careful I was. <laughs> As I say, one of these already has one side broken that happened in transit when this one wasn't packed terribly well, unfortunately. I do sympathize with the owner. I think they thought they were packing it well enough, but they weren't. Um, I, I get some of the most unbelievable packing materials. I have actually had stuff sent to me where someone sent me like rags as the, uh, as the packing material. Um, and, uh, what do you do with them afterwards? I mean, ultimately I just want to try and send it back to them with them, but, um, 
there's a bird in here. I don't know what's. I don't know if it's one of mine or it's just a pigeon. Come on! It's, I think it's a pigeon. Come on! Come on! Ah. Terrifying! It's terrifying. Hate it. Don't like it. Do do do. No, I don't like it. Oh, I just moved the window. I move myself sometimes around on the uh, OBS screen sometimes by accident. Yes, really, Rex. <laughs> um, I, I, I have packing material here. I have my own packing material. I buy it. I buy big, huge rolls of bubble wrap and I buy bags of uh, packing peanuts. Uh, I hate them, but at the end of the day, when I've done this work and I've made the computers all work and look good and everything like that, I don't want them to then get damaged on the trip home. So if someone sends something to me with really lousy packaging, I always make sure it gets sent back with really good packaging. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not expensive stuff. I mean, um, for me to just buy a huge roll of packing material, it'll last me stacks and stacks of computers. So yeah, it's really not an issue. Uh, all right, let me uh, just do a quick little chat catch up. This is a little bit of chatting down on. I've been 3D printing little clips to replace those. That's excellent. You can snap one off the clip. You can press plastic one. But yeah, I mean, look, I generally... Yeah, hello. It's a pigeon just here. Uh, hi. What's up? What, uh, what you doing? Huh? Huh? Oh, there's another one. There's no food in here. I don't know why they come in here. What? I now have two pigeons in here. What? 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 Don't look at me like that. Oh, geez, there they go. All right, so that's all the RAM out. We're all good. Um, so, um, it was packed with a pillow full of... What? What are you talking about, Mr. Fahrenheit? Yeah, these um the the thing about this the stuff that was sent to me packed in rags is that uh, look they're obviously just from someone's I don't know shed or you know rag cupboard or something like that and they kind of had that that musty kind of stuck in a cupboard for donkey's years smell about them. Rutke Mars, Greg Rutke, hello, welcome to the live stream. Thank you very much for joining. Um, go ahead and plug your channel. What's happening with your video production at the moment? Come on, Grudy. We haven't seen a video in donkey's years. Not even a Q&A. What's going on? <clears throat> Come on. Grudy be slacking. Um, da, 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 da. I don't know, worst packing was a 2CX put into a box twice the size of the Mac itself with no padding whatsoever. It arrived in the cargo bay of a coach. It's so frustrating, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yes, I think we all have um, uh, horror packing stories, don't we? I mean, uh, uh, you know, sort of with Grudy joining, uh, there's there's that one where he bought that uh, G5, I think it was. It was a G5, the, the kind of rare one that only has, um, it's a single processor 1.8 or something like that. And it just arrived as a mangled mess. It was just unbelievable. Um Two C plus. I see. Every time someone says two C, I always think two C I or two C X. I, I am terrible with. Why did Apple do that to us? And it happens all the time. Someone was sending me a message saying, "Hey, I, you know, can you have a look at the two C for me?" And I'm reply with, "Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you, man, happy to have a look at the two C I." And it's like it's a two C. It's like yeah, I know it's a two C. I just type two C I because my fingers are so used to typing two C I. Life is just in the way currently. I understand. I understand. Um, so, uh, yeah, which G5, yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, it was that one that got terribly mangled in transit. Um, Apple, not Macintosh. Yeah, see, I do this all the time when people do 2C in, or 2C+, Plus, and I just go, oh, it's a 2CX, yeah, for sure. I'm just very Mac biased, sorry. I do actually have a 2C. Um, can't quite see it. It's just there. 
I've got two of them. I've got one that works and one that doesn't work. The one that doesn't work doesn't work. Well, it, it never worked, but then I made it worse. Uh, I know what I did wrong. It's a bit embarrassing, so I won't tell everyone about it. Um, okay. Exactly which D5. So it was the the one that you were saying, I think you were trying to haggle on price or something like that. It was the one you were saying is is rare, but not, ex not worth a lot of money. And it was, uh, I think, a single processor... 1.8 or something like that it was it's it's the rarer of them and uh and it was i don't know it was a few months ago i suppose and you finally managed to get hold of it and then it got sent to you and it arrived and the handles were just bent right down i mean it was an absolutely mangled mess when it arrived so it's probably one of many but yeah i have two twoies out in the shed waiting for restoration i've never touched an apple two so that would be a big learning experience they both spent some time underwater yeah look underwater um so um here's um here's um an interesting about I, I i grew up with the apple ii it was the sort of first i my very first computer was actually a, a dick smith computer dick smith vz 200 but the first i used that and then my parents started using it and getting into computers as well so they then decided to buy a computer for the household the other one was kind of just for me and um and so um, they bought an Apple IIe, uh, and we ended up actually getting a hard drive for it eventually as well. And it's a very different experience using an Apple to using a Macintosh. You know, I mean, it's it's a little bit like the difference between DOS and Windows. You know, they're, they're, you've got you know you need to know key commands and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it's yeah, it's a very very different experience. And working with five and a quarter inch floppy drives, and of course those floppy drives, a lot of them need servicing. It's yeah. But it's, you know, it's a lifestyle, the Apple II. Uh, all right, all right, okay, let me, let, me get some, let me get some work done. I'm going to start doing some cleaning here. I'm going to start cleaning up these pads. Well, actually, how about I pull out these pins first for these re-soldered, these caps. So this person did actually recap this with new uh, axial caps, but I'm going to put new ones in because people pay me to recap. They put in a 35 volt in replacement of a 16 volt. Um, I generally put in a 25 volt and replace in the 16 volt, but you know, um, it's okay to go up in voltage, but you don't want to go up in capacitance. Eh, yep. Um, happy Friday, Western Hemisphere. Happy Saturday, Eastern Hemisphere. Yes, it is a lovely Saturday here at the moment. Um, Right. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. I'm getting too caught up in the chat. All this interesting chat going on from all of my viewers, and then just getting caught up reading it. It's terrible. Not getting any work done. There's another hair again. I say it's quite a dark hair, and I think it's probably a pet hair because it's very thin. Um, this is my normal trick when I am removing these sorts of pins. I get a bit of solder onto the iron and make that uh, pin wobble around like that and then I whip it out with a pair of tweezers like this. Whip, whip, whip. Out she comes. Cool whip. And then we'll move across to this one. We'll do the same. This one wasn't in particularly well to start off with. It wasn't properly soldered so this one should, should come out. I think it might be bent on the other side because it ain't coming out. Go out the other way. What's going on? What is going on? Have a look on the other side, shall we? Uh, just got to move the microscope a little. Here we are. Yeah, let's try it from this side. Yeah, see, this is one of these ones where it's really hard to get the thing properly hot because of all this copper. This ground plane copper that you see, that's all the crisscross green we've got going on there. Uh, let's do these ones. Focus. Focus. Here, yeah, is that here? As I say, it's probably fur. Um, mm, here we go. 
So I was thinking of a question the other day that I wanted to pose to people that were watching my uh, live stream. Uh, I may have even asked this one before, but I'm going to ask it again. What is a piece of software, a game, whatever? It can be a game, it could be an application, whatever. What is a piece of software, old software, that you would get a vintage computer up and running for just so that you can play it? And the Mac yet, guys, you have to answer something other than you two. Um, so what is some software that you would actually go to all the trouble of getting hold of a vintage computer and getting it all working and set up just so you can use that software, okay, game or application? Jay, thank you for joining. Um, as usual, I have just been killing time until you got here. Uh, so now we're actually starting to get rolling. So thank you for uh, rocking up. Missed Riven X Files games. Yeah, actually, I'll better this. I better. There you go. Does that solder stuff smell? Yes, it does. Um, I'll just go. Hello, Michael. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Midi Maze. I don't know that one. Thank you, YouTube, for not letting me know Bruce was streaming. Yeah, well, YouTube's like that. Um, Descent, yep, no worries. I just actually found a copy of that on one of my, uh, um, uh, one of my old backups recently. Creepy Castle, Grids, Shuffle Puck Cafe, Mist Riven X-Files. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the good things about Mist is, of course, you can play the, that real Mist now in 3D, so you can still get the gaming experience, but it does, it lacks some of the quaintness of the original Mist, um, that was, you know, created with, uh, Strata, Strata 3D, um, and Riven, of course, yeah, I love Riven, um, just love that man. Uh, Bolo, Marathon, Robo Sport, Oscar the Grouch Extension, yeah, I remember that one. As I, went, I love trash, you know, when you empty the trash, excuse me. Um, okay, what else we got? Escape Velocity, Microsoft Flight Simulator 1 for PC, lots of memories, doesn't play right in emulation, fair enough. Bard's Tale. I'm going to have to go back and check all these and, and drive some of them out. Elite Force. Set up a network of G3s to play Descent Land. That's awesome. That is so good. Invite a whole bunch of people around and play. Um, what have we got here? Creepy Castle, Shuffle Pack Cafe. Um, Putt Putt Games. That's what got me started. How about that? Uh, da, 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 Spectre, yeah, that's that's good fun. I tire of Spectre fairly quickly, but it's still fun. Um, Spin Doctor, Spin Doctor, Spin Doctor. Remind me what Spin Doctor is. Isn't that something that? Isn't that something that I thought that was something Spin Doctor didn't? Wasn't that something that came with Toast, or maybe it's a different thing? Uh, Lemmings. I just played Lemmings the other day. It is amazing how addictive that freaking thing is. Uh, Prince of Persia and Battle Chess. Uh, does it have to be a Mac game app? No, look, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, uh, Tetris with Russian music. Uh, Duke Nukem, Doom, Wolfenstein. Yeah, I get all that. Duke Nukem, jeez, I used to love playing that. And Doom, for that matter. I used to play it, and then I'd get to a point where the game started getting too hard for me, so then I'd just do the cheats and then just play it without dying. Because, you know... Uh, that's just how, how I am. <laughs> I was just saying, I was chatting to uh, Dana Does Stuff uh, yesterday, and I was just telling him how uh, when I played Diablo, I got sick of dying all the time, so I just started running the cheats on it so I could just play the game without dying. And I really enjoyed it. Um, Zork, yeah. I, you know, I, I've never really played the original Zork, but I love Zork Nemesis. Uh, that's one of these 3D mist style games. Absolutely love that. I just, you know, love playing that. Uh, it's just so uh, immersive. It's just, it just absolutely love it. Um, Broken Sword Monkey on. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. The Spin Doctor was also a game. There we go. I did not know that. A bunch of old pixie da da. There's, there's so many answers here. I'm. Uh, I, I'm I'm not getting anything done. Star Trek the Kobayashi, Kobayashi Alternative. I don't know that one. I did have a Star Trek game. I think it was terrible from memory. 
Um, defragmenters. Something peaceful. Watch about watching an old defragmenter running. Yes, what was the one that was uh, speed disc? Not the speed disc. That was the one that used to. Uh, um, uh, nice microscope. See, so like this. Thank you very much. I like this microscope. Uh, original Unreal. Disc of Tron. Tron. Yes, isn't it funny they actually, the, the movie Tron had their game in it, and then they made a game of the game in the movie. Okay. All right, we're getting some solar out now. Uh, this is, ooh, oh, I zoomed in a bit there. What's all that about? So this is uh, something that I had generally have people ask me about all the time, getting solder out of these holes. And it's a bit of a pain, uh, especially when you're like I am at the moment, you're having real trouble getting things where you want them to be. So um, some of them are really easy. Uh, I'm going to guess this one's probably going to be easy. Like that. Well, no, it nearly is. Like that. Nice empty hole now. Doesn't that look good? The ones that are really difficult are the ones that are usually attached to ground. Uh, and that's because the uh, copper is sucking a lot of the heat away. So what do we do about getting those out? Um, generally, what I will do is I'll add some fresh solder to them. It seems silly to add solder to things you want to take solder out of, but it just works. Uh, solder likes hanging out with other solder, so you just make a big solder group party. And keep going. This one still ain't giving up its secrets. And then if you get really stuck, you can go from the other side. I'm just going to do the ones that I can from this side to start off with, and then we'll get to the uh, problem ones after. Had someone drop in a computer a couple of Mac 2s yesterday. Don't know if he's watching at the moment. He dropped off a couple of Mac 2 uh, motherboards. And, oh, there we go. That's nice and empty. And uh, he'd done the recapping himself, but he's, there's some trace damage he wants me to look at. And I'm telling you what, that guy does some tidy soldering. Tidy, tidy soldering. I looked at that and I thought, geez, I hope you don't want me to recap that better than you've just done. You've done a great job. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All this solder hanging out the bottom. See if we can clear it. Yay, that one's empty too. So we've got two empty holes there. This is the trouble one, wherever it is. There it is, there it is, there it is. This is the trouble one because he's on that plane of copper. Hard to get heat there. So I might have to do all my tricks to get this one empty. If you never know, sometimes you just get lucky. It's nearly empty. Let's put a little bit of flux on it. I think it's probably enough to get a pin through, so I think we'll be fine. So I didn't have to do any of my tricks. That'll do. Let me just see if I can get a pin through it. Yeah. Yeah, I can get a pin through it. That's all I need. That's all I care about. Okay, here we go. Uh... JJ Brubaker, thank you very much. Afternoon, Choplifter, Ultima One, Load Runner. I mean, you know what? Load Runner is a game that I played on something. I can't remember what I played it on. It might have been an Apple II. It might have been a different computer. I cannot remember. But Load Runner is a game that I used to play and I used to absolutely love. I have never, ever played Load Runner on a Mac. Um... I have got to try and find, uh, I'm sure there's one on, uh, on what do you call that thing, Macintosh Garden. I have got to go out there and get myself a load runner and, uh, and play it because I have never played load runner on Mac. I mean, my life is not complete. What the, what the? Right, so we've now got four empty holes for the new radial caps to go in. Now we just got to do the cleaning bit. Now, of course, we did skip the capacitor removal. Anyone who's feeling robbed. Uh, the reason we skipped the capacitor removal is because the person who owned this board removed the caps themselves. And far be it from me to complain about having part of the job done for me. 
Uh, but we do need to clean these up, get them ready for some new solder. Um, chocolate, do yeah, I used to play that. I definitely used to play chocolate, remember that. Uh, addicted to Load Runner on my Lisa. So, uh, Load Runner, uh, that would make it a black and white game, I guess. Um, tell me, is there a colour Load Runner on the map? Or is the Load Runner that works in black and white working colour as well? I know the Load Runner I used to play was in colour, which probably means it was for the Apple II. Oh, man, I'll tell you a game that I remember on the old Apple II. I don't know if anyone else remembers this. Does anyone remember Montezuma's Revenge? Um, I loved that. This one's a bit dirty. Got a bit of gunge. Got a bit of gunge on it. And I'm turning into scunge. And then over here is where we have that broken trace that we're going to need to sort out. All uh, par for the course, as they say. <coughs> Oopsie. Oopsie. And that was colour. Oh, good. I'm glad to know there is a colour load run. That's what I'm going to be looking for. Guess what I'm doing this afternoon? I'm going to be playing a load on a I, uh, when was it last Saturday? Which I probably even already talked about this because I streamed on Sunday last week, didn't I? So I won't tell the same story again. Um, that would be, uh, that would be rather tedious. Oh, anyone who watched my live stream last week, uh, saw that I was resting a little with a, uh, a 2SI, I had to recap the logic board and the power supply. I went for four and a half hours. Congratulations to anyone who's stuck around for that. Um, and the 2SI, um, well, the power supply was a big problem um, because, first of all, I didn't have all the caps I needed. I've rectified that. The caps arrived on Tuesday, so I was able to finish the recapping. Power supply didn't work. Just dead. Nothing. So, um, a little bit of poking around and whatnot. I still couldn't get it to work. I swapped over the little daughter card, which is... Let me uh, just see if I've got one here, which I think I do. And I'm not too... I think it's around here somewhere. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Is that it? No, that's not it. I don't know. Oh, there it is. It's over there. I'm not going to go get it. But anyhow, 2SI has the main power supply, and then it's got this little jutting out daughter card with a bunch of pins and your desolder. I swapped that daughter card over with another one that I had a spare, and the power supply worked beautifully. So the problem is on that daughter card somewhere. I'll try and fix the problem and get that running as a spare later on. But uh, So that power supply I did manage to get working, but it, 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 um, it took a bit of work. The 2SI, what a nightmare that thing was. That thing had so many damaged traces, and it ended up with more once I finished cleaning it. So I got the thing working beautifully, and I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. It came out and it stopped working. And it stopped working because the ultrasonic cleaner had cleared away some corrosion, and it was the corrosion, it was the little bits of rust and gunk and stuff that was actually keeping contact on a couple of pins. So uh, thankfully, I was able to find them quite easily. They were on the ROMs. Because it worked beautifully when I used my um, Rominator, um, but it wouldn't work running off the, the original ROMs. So I found these little trace breaks, I fixed them up, uh, got that 2SI working. So the 2SI and the power supply working, it's all great. Unfortunately, it it's, was more than just a standard recapping, so a little bit, little bit more expensive for the customer. Sorry about that, but um, it happens. It's, you know, I mean, uh, um, it, you know, the, the, uh, these computers are old and they get damaged and they need repairs. So... Uh, just let it to be a, a lesson to everyone that if you let them sit for too long, they will end up costing you more money because there's more work to be done. Um, and uh, anyhow, I got that one working beautifully. So that's just a follow-up to my last stream for anyone who sat there for the full four and a half hours. That computer is now working beautifully. So, uh, um, Montezuma's was the popular one in year 10 here. Okay, interesting. Uh... Karateka on the Apple IIc a lot. Yeah, I, I played Karateka 
crazy, you know. Uh, the thing about Karateka that always got me was there was the lag. There was that incredible lag when you're moving the, the little guy around with your joystick or whatever you're moving him with, your keyboard. You know, you'd press the button and then, and then the arm would move and then you'd press another button and then the leg would move. And it was just this incredible lag. But, you know, you just dealt with it back then because that, <laughs> that was what you had. So, um Montezuma's Revenge. I had that when I drank the water in the Philippines. Boom, boom. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. Oh, that's me. Which was the mistake? Yes, that's right. Steve did a stream right after my stream and stayed up until whatever hour it was. Um, yeah, so uh, and I think I watched it. I think I watched some of it. I... Uh, it's it's often very hard for me to watch streams after I stream because I've been sitting here for several hours. I finish and I'm hungry and I'm thirsty and I've got a whole bunch of things to do. So, you know, often when I finish my stream, I've just I've just got to go and do stuff. Um, Adrian reminded me I really haven't seen. I should really get around to recapping. I keep telling people. Goodness me, Dana, you should know better. I like your latest uh, picture, by the way, with the uh, L-shaped screen. That was a cute one. Um, Anonymous Freak, Anonymous Freak. Uh, uh, log off. Okay, see you later, Anonymous Freak. Thank you for joining. Oh, Groody, thank you. I'm going to go down to my garage and work on my Harleys. Going to have chat shut off while I'm watching you, just so don't, uh, so I don't accidentally moderate. No worries. <laughs> Thanks for that, Groody. I appreciate it. Yeah, he accidentally, I think, sort of um, uh, blocked someone uh, from a stream the other day by accident <laughs> when he had his phone in his pocket. That was funny. Thank you very much for the super chat. I do appreciate it, Groody. Um, all right, okay. Well, very few computers. I'll stay for four hours to watch. Oh, well, thank you. That's a good thing. Yeah. Wait a minute, an AC30. We stay for four hours for that. And this one won't take four hours. I'm just telling you now. Um, the Vectrex Mac, I loved that. And I think someone even put a comment on that one going, is this real or something like that? You must love it when that happens, uh, Dana, that someone actually gets it confused for actually being a real thing. Um, I, I, I love that. Okay, Anonymous Freak, thank you very much. Fix stuff. All right, I'll fix it. Thank you for the uh, Super Chat. Super Chat's coming uh, thick and fast today. It's wonderful. I do appreciate it. Thank you to everyone. Got 38 viewers at the moment, so hello to you all. Um, Vectrex Mac was a mate. Yeah, I mean, that was just, that was incredible. Uh, people may not know what a Vectrex is. I would love one. Um, there, I saw one of my recapping customers, I think, has like three of them. It's like, oh, can I have one? The problem is that I have come across Vectrex for sale, but they are so expensive. So Vectrexes were a vector-based game. Um, they would draw, you know, vectors on the screen, similar to the game Spectre, um, the way that's all drawn with lines, and the Vectrex was like that. But uh, whereas, whereas Spectre was, um, you know, sort of a normal raster bitmap screen drawing lines on it, the Vectrex was actually the 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 um, the little beam on the screen actually drawing lines on the screen rather than drawing a raster from top to bottom. It'd actually just draw the shapes on screen. And then you have overlays, clear plastic overlays that match the game you had. So the overlay might be a shape of something and then the game would work inside that shape. Um, yeah, and they uh, they are very, very collectible now. They, they were never particularly popular. Uh, if you could have been around at the right place in the right time, you could have got them for cheap because they never sold particularly well. They weren't really competing with the other games available. And they started off, I think, quite expensive. And then towards the end, when they weren't selling them, they started flogging them off for really cheap. And that would have been a great time to just buy a whole bunch of them. But, you know, I mean, it's it's like all of these things. I mean, you know, imagine if you could have just bought up all those Apple IIEs that schools were getting rid of in the olden days, or 2GSs, and just um, and just hung on to them until now. And then you'd be sort of selling them on on. on eBay for ridiculous amounts of money. But that's, of course, why they're expensive is because of their rarity. And, of course, the people that do have them now are generally hanging on to them. Um, rarely these days do you get that situation where someone has a look in their shed and says, oh, look at this old, old computer. Oh, I wonder what it is. It's probably worth nothing, so I'll stick it up on eBay for five bucks. Or I'll stick it out on the, you know, on, in front of the house for garbage collection or something like that. 
Okay, just scraping away some of this dark stuff. Just want to reveal nice clean copper for me to have solder on here. Don't like the dark stuff. Dark stuff needs to be banished from the uh, from the board. Banished, I tells you. Okay. We like things that are all shiny and clean. Not black and yucky. Okay. Now. I don't know if anyone's been onto Apple Apple's serial number info lately. A website. Um, it belongs to uh, House of Moth, Jay. For anyone who uh, had, might not have been onto that website lately, he has a Mac of the Month competition. Uh, and he puts uh, four computers up there, and you get to choose which you, one you want to vote for. And, uh, well, if you haven't voted yet, better get in there. We are running out of month. You don't want to miss out on having your say uh, on voting for the 512K, um, which I think, well, last time I looked, was winning, um, which is fantastic. I think people, I, I, I think it deserves to win because, you know, it was a fairly important computer at the time. Um, I don't have anything against the G4, but if you ask me to vote between those two, 512K is going to be the one I vote for. He's got a portable up there as well. I'd vote for that too. But once again, what's going on here? Got a bit more of this dark stuff going on here, which we need to banish from the board. <gasps> and a trace break. Okay. Um, a list of capacitive part numbers on the site. Yep. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit behind. To purchase some stuff from your Amazon links, is there a list of capacitors for the SE30? Um, I don't have affiliate links for the SE30 caps. Uh, I've only got links on the Recap and Mac website, which has been listed in there. Uh, which, but I don't, I don't get a kickback from those. Unfortunately, uh, buying those components from Amazon, I don't think you can buy those components from Amazon. So uh, I don't get, uh, I haven't got an affiliate link for that. So uh, just yeah, just buy them. Uh, I think I've got the links I've got. I think are for Mouser. And it's basically because I just like the way their um, linking worked. I was able to create links that would just go straight to the part or straight to the search. I don't think I was able to do that with DigiKey or one of the other ones. So, um, But yes, I do have the list of the capacitors there on Recap and Mac. You can just sort of, uh, you can pick up. There are also, what's the website that does all of the the, the sets? Is it Console 5 or something like that where there, there are, there are pre-made kits that you can buy? Uh, the only reason why I wouldn't buy those is you don't get to choose what goes into the kit. You don't get to choose what cap goes in, what brand, or anything like that. It's just someone's put together a kit of all these components, and it's just whatever they've put in the kit. Uh, that's the only reason I don't like it. Now, have I managed to join that? I think that's joined. Let's get out the beepity beep beep machine, shall we? Come on. What's going on here? All the leads are all lost here we go here's a funny thing i uh for people who have been seeing me use my uv solder mask lately they'll see that i've been curing it using a uv laser which is great pew 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 pew, pew laser um and okay. yep we joined uh these are uh wires going to the pds slot so we, you know it would probably work even if there was a break but you just would probably have problems if you plug something into the PDS slot. Um, and um, I've got a one of this milliwatt laser that I use for curing UV solder mask. And then I saw someone selling uh, a, I think there was either a five or a 10 milliwatt laser. I thought more powerful laser, faster drying. How about that? I'd like to do some of that. So I bought this laser. I think it costs about 30 Australian dollars. What is going on? I assume that's pigeon again. Uh, now, where did I put my laser? Where did I put my laser? Oh, here it is. I just want to show you this laser that I got it. This is it. This is the one that was sold as a 5 milliwatt, or it might have even been a 10 milliwatt. Just connect up to the power supply. Nice and easy. Runs uh, up to 5.5 .5 volts. And this is nowhere near as strong as the one milliwatt 
that I bought originally, the, the main main one, which is floating around here somewhere. Here we go. This is it here. This is the one I wrecked the camper with. This one here. So I don't know what they're talking about when they're talking about the, the the power of this one. It is nothing compared to this one. So it's all horse hockey. Um, okay, so we're working our way through these caps rather slowly because that's just how I work. Um, people don't expect me to work quickly because uh, they've watched my streams before. Alright, let's jump back to the microscope view. Got some more black stuff here that I'm going to have to get rid of. David, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. Um, Sonny Foster, hello! Having fun, I hope. Yes, I am indeed. How are you, Sonny? Uh, 2SE boards are still trying to fly to Bruce. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, things have been moving pretty slowly at the moment. Um, no doubt about that. The old... Uh, Anything sent from country to country is taking its time. I mean, generally stuff is getting through. I've had a couple of things go missing. I bought some parts for my um machine, you know, the uh, solder sucker machine, and they never arrived. Contacted the seller. They said, no worries, I'll send you some more. And I still haven't got them. Getting a little bit frustrated by that, to be honest. <sighs> have you ever shone UV on the pigeons? No, I have not done that. I don't know what that would do, actually. I don't know if they'd mind. Um, one interesting that that thing that does happen is I have a, um, a UV globe. And sometimes when I've got lots of UV masks all over the board, and I can't be bothered sitting there with a the laser going from bit to bit to bit, I just sit the thing underneath the UV globe and let it sit there for a few hours to cure. Um, the, the problem with that is that it's UV light and so insects are attracted to it. So I come back to the board and I find all these like mosquitoes and stuff that have got stuck to the UV solder mask. They've gone to the UV light, they've landed on the board, they've landed in the solder mask and then they've got stuck to it. And so I, I get this board and then I've got all these mozzies and stuff to sort of start that I have to I pluck off the UV mask. Crazy, uh, crazy times. Lots of stories. Yeah, lots of stories. Oh, actually, I should do this one as well. So, so far, one trace break, but everything else is looking all right. The, the dirty... Uh, uh, tr sort of traces are cleaned up okay. Get solder onto them. Sutter. Sutter. To protect them. Uh, I know where there are some good instructions on how to realign a Mac SE and SE30 tube. I think I need to move the little uh, magnet ring around the tube and I'll, I'll electrocute myself. Yeah. Um, it is explained in. I have it here. It is explained in this book here, Macintosh Repair and Upgrade Secrets. There's a whole section on replacing that. Um, it obviously gives you tips on how to not kill yourself. Uh, let me just see if I can find it in here. Uh, video problems, video upgrades, it might be in video upgrades, we'll see. Uh, now, this particular book, although you might find it on, on the Ebays, um, you're screwed. Here we go. So, here's yeah, here's the whole process of explaining, doing it here, uh, replacing the yoke. Um, the, uh, this book here, as I say, you might be able to get hold of it, but the whole thing has been scanned in and PDF and is available on the interwebs. So, that will give you the, the uh, instructions on how to do it. Um, okay.
Uh, anything you don't know about Macs? Yeah, heaps. Heaps, heaps. Just watch me on the Mac Yak show. There are whole great big sections of stuff that I don't know. I know quite a lot about some Macs, but there are a lot of Macs I don't know jack it out. Um, and that's where the other Mac Yak guys come in handy. And this is one of the reasons why we are good as a group, because we, uh, we all know um, sort of bits of things. And then when we get together, we get uh, all of that knowledge combined and we become the uh, the Mac super brains. Just talking this up a bit, isn't it? Ow! I just flick solder onto my foot. Doesn't matter matter whether you call it solder or solder. It hurts when it lands on you in its molten state. Okay, just cleaning off black stuff here again. You can see all that gunk happening around here. This cap. Here obviously leaked quite a bit. I think this one probably leaked more than any of the others. Um, this is all just great big ground here, great big lumps of copper. Gotta clean that up, get some solder on it. And everyone will be happy. I tell you what, the uh, the recapping has been very, very steady lately. I've just been getting boards coming in left, right and centre. It is unfortunate that it's not much of an earner for me and it, it's more of a hobby and it's more of part of doing the YouTube channel and stuff like that. It's not something that I can say, oh yeah, I can give up my normal job and just become a full-time recapper. I have considered that as an option, um, just given how much I've been getting lately, but there is, I simply cannot make enough money from it for it to become a full-time job and unless I don't know the YouTube stuff starts filling in the gap it's still a long way from doing that that's for sure um, and the reason is and I've mentioned this before on my live streams I simply cannot charge enough um, to to turn it into a full-time pursuit um, that people are going to be prepared to pay um, it's just not possible um, I charge more. For, it's 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 kind of funny. I charge more for recapping an Amiga than I do for re for recapping a, a Mac, and I've had quite a lot of Amiga recapping. Don't get me wrong, but um, on one of the Amiga boards, someone said, "Oh, you know, this guy Bruce does recapping of Amigas," and the first person came back and said, uh, "You know, am I reading that price correctly? I can't believe that's so expensive. I need to put my prices up." And I sort of thought to myself, "Well, you know, I mean, ultimately, it can't be a charity." Um, and so, uh, you know, I have to, have to charge some money and go mad otherwise. Well, it's, more importantly, it, it just wouldn't be sustainable. You just wouldn't be able to keep doing it. You, you'd get to a point where you just say, no, look, I'm fed up with this. I'm not going to do it anymore. Ah, okay. I like the Justice Nerd League. That's us all right. I like the ball very much. Except, you know, without all of the implants. Um, current project is X-Servant RAID upgrade. Oh, you need to talk to Jay, as of not? Um, he's uh, the old, he's a big x -Serve fan. Is it a uh, Intel or a G5 um, x -Serve? Just out of curiosity, son. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's, uh, I think that's all the caps. Let me just check. I've done those ones and I've done those. Oh, no, one more. Forget about this little guy. The little guy that usually kills UE8. This one here. Mmm. You can't see that one there. There's UE8 and there's a little UE8 killer. I recently cracked the old 4,000 subs. Thank you to everyone who has been watching and subscribing and joining up and everything. I do appreciate it. It's uh, it's wonderful. Uh, so far, I, I haven't had to put up with some of the 
horribleness that uh, comes with uh, YouTubing. For the most part, everyone is civil with the comments they leave and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so far, so good. I had a very interesting thing happen the other day. I got a notification from YouTube. I was just on my YouTube studio and I got this little notification that said, copyright infringement. I'm thinking, uh-oh, what have I done? What have I done? I'm going to get in trouble. And then I actually realized it was a copyright infringement um, from someone else that YouTube had identified. They'd used some sort of downloading app to download my video from my channel. They downloaded the whole video and then they'd uploaded the whole video to their channel. Uh, and YouTube basically just identified it as being an exact ripoff of my video and uh, notified me of it. So I just put in a claim to say this is my content um, and, uh, and it got immediately removed. So that was good. Uh, but that was a weird one. That was a, weird, a very weird one. Someone would just basically take the whole video. I mean, it's one of my live streams. It wasn't like one of my edited ones. It was one where I sit here and waffle and talk about nonsense. Um, and yeah, they took the whole thing. Is anyone else hearing these figs falling down? Um. Right. Okay. So that's all of the cap off, which I didn't do because it was already done, apart from the axials, I've removed those. Uh, I have cleaned all of the pads, I have cleaned up some of these busted traces, should I actually, well sorry, uh, yucky traces, should I repair this trace first? Oh actually I'll tell you what I do need to do, I need to get some UV solder mask in a few places. So let's, uh, let's get these things cleaned up and looking all pristine. What's, what's, what's that? Yeah, that's all right. Yep, still got copper. So this is the break here. Out of focus. There you go. That's the break, break and trace right there. So I've got to run one across there. Um, do I do that now or do it after? I'll do it now. It's going to be easier, I think, without the cap there. I just got to make sure I don't stuff it up when I put the cap on. So let's get some flux, which I'm running rather low on, and I have no idea when I'm going to get replacements thanks to a delivery that went missing. I bought it through Amazon, so I can obviously claim to get the, the money back and everything, but at the end of the day, I don't want my money back. I want my friggin' flux. Come on, man. Must away for a bit. There is a, a bun insisting attention. Fair enough. Who am I to withhold it? Fair enough. Um, right, okay. Uh, Mini figs, yes, okay, oh, here we go. Yep, no worries. Okay, all right. Just moved by itself. I felt like that just moved by itself. Ghosts in the system. All right, let's get some wire. Maybe I moved it with my fat gun. This is the wire I'm going to use here. There are links to buying this wire. I use, um, what do you call that stuff? Um, enameled wire, the sort of wire that you would find in an electromagnet or a transformer. It's, uh, it is insulated, uh, but this insulation comes off very easy with a soldering iron, uh, which is what I am grabbing now. Let's uh, hold this wire in place with some tweezers. And let's melt that enamel off. Now, I have had people say, why do you use enameled wire if all you're going to do is melt the enamel off? Why don't you just use wire without enamel? That's a really good question. The reason for it is that if you're running a trace across a board, not just doing a little trace repair like I'm doing here, but let's say you've got an instance where you're needing to re-establish a connection and it's going from point A to point B on the board. Um, it means you can run that wire past other components or connections or something like that and it will be insulated. So it's just giving you an extra little bit of protection, I guess. Um, hey, steady hand. Oh, I'm shaking a lot today, aren't I? It looks. It always looks like you're shaking way more under the microscope. I mean, if you're looking at it with the naked eye, the hand's barely moving. But the uh, when it's under the microscope, it looks like we've got Parkinson's disease or something. Uh, 
Okay. Look at my wobbly hand. Stop it. Right. Just going to tidy this one up a tiny bit. Whoopsie. A lot of solder on the end of it. There we go. Magic of flux. Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. I like bought one. And we have re-established connection. No more break. But I do need to get a little bit of UV solder mask on here because I've got quite a few exposed traces. And I don't want to accidentally create a short when I put the new caps on. So if I've mentioned, I have mentioned before in my streams that the new caps that I put on have larger pins on them than the original ones. And so those pins hang over the edge of the pad and you, ha you run that risk of actually having it touch one of these exposed traces. And I don't want to create a short. I don't want to create a long. Um, okay, so let's just dry that off. We need to make sure it's nice and clean before we put UV mask on. I've got my UV mask in a little metal tin. I do that because it keeps the light out. But it comes in a syringe, but the syringe is kind of inconvenient. Having it in this, I can just get my little paintbrush and I can just uh, paint. paint it on. In one of my videos, while I was doing this, I was painting it on, and a person left a comment and they said, You need a smaller paintbrush. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Do I? It's funny the comments that people leave sometimes, isn't it? Take the trouble to actually go and type that in. You need a smaller paintbrush. Ah. Let's see. Where am I looking? No, let's look around here. I'm generally accepting of most comments that people leave uh, on my live streams. The ones that I tend to delete are ones where people recommend doing things in a way that I think is actually bad. So someone might say, oh, you know, when you're doing this, you should do this and do that and do the other. And I look at that and I think, actually, that's, I think that's a really bad recommendation. I would not recommend doing that at all. So, for example, let's say I do a recapping live stream and someone leaves a comment saying, Hey, uh, it's just way quicker to just remove the caps with um, uh, by twisting them off or something like that, which of course I don't recommend. I will delete a comment like that because uh, I don't want anyone who watches the video to look at that comment and think that that's a way that I might endorse. Um, you know, I, I, the ways that I show in my video are the ways that I endorse, and. They're not necessarily the right ways, but they're the ways that work for me. Uh, if people want to create their own YouTube channel and their own YouTube videos and talk about their own ways of doing things, that's totally fine by me. But uh, putting those sorts of comments on my channel is not what I want. So I then just remove those sorts of things. But most other comments are quite happy for, to just sit there. Um, right. This is really interesting stuff, isn't it? Me painting. This is the Bob Ross section. Hush comes over the ground. Okay, let's uh, pew pew time. Pew 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 pew. Yeah, that's a really good recommendation when they said need a small um, paintbrush. I should have just said, no worries, you send it to me and I'll use it. 
The size that I use is actually called a triple zero, um, which is pretty darn small. It just looks very big. It might look big on the microscope. It might look big on the microscope. I don't think it does, but, you know. So this is the boring bit. This is me curing this UV mask using my laser beam. Pew, pew, pew. And I do apologize that I have to go through this, but... Yeah, yeah, it's that's the sort of comment when people sort of go in and recommend like you know unsafe ways of doing things. Oh, excuse me. I had breakfast just before I started uh, live streaming, so that's why I'm all burpy. So those who have been watching my streams for a while will know that what I used to do with these is I would paint this stuff on and then I would go and let the board sit outside in the sun for a bit and I'd do something else while I'm waiting for it to dry. But now that I have this laser beam, um, I can get this stuff dried way, way, way quicker. Uh, laser beam just gets in there and you can actually see the stuff change. It goes to this sort of matte finish rather than being really glossy, wet, shiny. It sort of changes into this matte. Speaking of Matt, where's Matt? Where's Matt's tech? Okay, so this is what the end of the paintbrush looks like. Let me put that in front of my head so you can see it. There we go. That's what the tip of the paintbrush looks like. <coughs> this doesn't always look too crash hot, but... It'll work. That's what I'm all about. One of the things I often do when I am using this, uh, this is something that I've only been doing recently, but I have, I like doing it. I hit this with a bit of hot air after I've cured it with the laser, and it kind of goes more matte, like this. This makes it feel like it's drier. I don't know if it is, but it makes it feel like it is. Right, okay, so that's those ones. They're ready for caps. I've got to do a little bit down here as well, not as bad, thankfully. And I've got to do a little bit more over there as well. Just clean this off just using a tissue and some isopropyl alcohol. 100%, 100% isopropyl alcohol. That's a new saying now, isn't it? 100%. You say, oh, how are you? Oh, 100%. Um, 100%. Are you going out? Uh, are you going out to dinner? Oh, hundred percent. Look at all the bits of tissue around there. <laughs> I'm only about 84% today. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, this is true. Oh, okay, where are we? Uh, I noticed a distinct lack of sharks for you to attach your lasers to. I know. Well, I'm not particularly close to the water here, so... Unless we get a bit of a Sharknado thing happening. Never seen that movie. Sharknado. I keep saying to my wife, can we let's watch Sharknado? It's apparently so bad it's funny. And she's like, no, 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 no. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So it means I have to watch it on my own. But 
whenever I have time to myself, I end up doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Uh, I used to play a lot on the Apple II. Dig Dug. I don't know that one. Bruce, I've seen Austin Powers. Why? What have I done? What did I do? What did I do? I've seen. I think I've seen all of them. Uh, oh yes, of course. Yes, 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 yes. I remember. Laser beam. Yes, I remember now. I remember now. It's a long time since I've seen that movie. A long time. I saw it when it came out. I've maybe seen it once since then, but I haven't seen it in a long time. The first one in particular was just wonderful. Dr. Evil. You're not 100% evil. You're semi-evil. Quasi-evil. Love that. Is there a better tool for disk benchmarking? Um, there is actually an application called MacBench. Uh, it does all sorts of benchmarking, I think including disk benchmarking. Uh, it's extremely thorough, the old MacBench, I have to say. Um, so I would say that there's MacBench would be my answer to that. Oh, excuse me. My breakfast again. Shark net full of sharks caught in the power lines after the hurricane recently. Real life shark. No, 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 I did not see that. Was Tara Reid anywhere around it? Okay. Nearly done, nearly done, then we can get some caps on this thing. It's just these are the necessary steps uh, to make sure that we get it right first time. Um, when I am doing recapping of someone else's board, that w someone who has already tried to recap it, so what I refer to as re-recapping, um, I will always... Um, sorry, I'm just going to clean this off. Okay, cool. Um... I always take the old caps off. Well, almost always take the old caps off, particularly with boards like the SE30 uh, and the Color Classic and that. And I take it off because of this, because of these traces running around the components. I have to be able to see what they look like underneath. So I have to do these steps to make sure that when that cap goes on, if there's a problem, if something doesn't work, I'm not going to be second guessing myself about whether the, the recapping was done properly um i know that i can i can fairly safely say look well, okay well i know the problem isn't an accidental short around the caps because i did all that incredibly careful uv masking and stuff like that and things such And we're going to paint ourselves a little tree here. Just keep using a wide brush. If not, if not, I like it. Disc Warrior 2. I'm so cross at Disc Warrior. And Disc Warrior is a software that I've been using for such a long time, and to be in a situation at the moment where it doesn't work is very frustrating for the new Macs. I'm missing. I'm reading the chat. I'm missing. Okay, uh, where are we? Well, 
Do it right the first time. Yes, I agree with that. <clears throat> My Mac Pro's fans are going off. I might need to repaste this thing one day. Preferably before it blows up. I live stream using a 3 comma 1. Um, this used to be my main Mac. Uh, but then I bought a 5 comma 1. And so this one is now the shed computer. Um, and it used to just, I used to just use it for looking up schematics and stuff like that. But now it's live streaming with OBS. Ah, oh, dear idea. Okay, how's this one look? Oh, I'm gonna need to do it here as well. We're getting close though. I mean, we're running out of out of uh, caps. We've had to put mask on just about every one. Oh. Mm. Mm. Good, good, good. That's my um. What's his name? Uh, what's that guy's name? Um, the Emperor. He'll always be the Emperor to me. None of this Palpatine garbage. <clears throat> Strike me down, and your journey to the dark side will be complete. Sounds a bit easier. <clears throat> You'll find that it is you who are mistaken about a great many things. Good old Ian McDermott, hey? He was great in that. So what do people think about the fact that when they brought out the... Uh, the new versions of the Star Wars movies, the episodes 4, 5, and 6, that in Empire Strikes Back, they replaced the actor who was the Emperor with Ian McDiarmid. He brought, they brought him in and refilmed, you know, they filmed his scenes and got rid of the original actor who played the part of the Emperor and, you know, and, and just, you know, replaced it. What do people think about that? Do they think it was better from a continuity perspective to... Uh, marry up the uh, actor that played him in the later film or do they think it was a really bad thing to mess with uh, the original creation just curious to know what people think about that one uh, I've seen some people that actually think it was a really good thing to do because they felt like the original emperor just the effects weren't done particularly well and he didn't look particularly menacing and for someone that powerful they sh it should have been done better and so going back and fixing it up with the actor that played it in, um, in um, Return of the Jedi is the way it should have been done. And then other people say, well, you just shouldn't have messed with the movie at all. <laughs> yes, I heard about the baboon's eyes superimposed. I didn't. There was one thing that they did do in the um, in the second movie that I didn't mind. I, um, uh, you know, again, I would rather that they were probably just not tampered with. But one thing they did was they put windows on the Cloud City, so that when they were running through those corridors, you could actually see clouds through the windows. In the original movie, they were just closed off, 
that kind of made a bit of sense to me because let's face it, if you're living in the clouds, wouldn't you have a couple of windows? Just a couple? Um, so, okay, let's just see what these ones look like. I think these might need the mask treatment as well. I mean, these ones look the best, but I'm going to clean them up anyway. Some guy's wife with raw chicken strapped to it. <laughs> yes, I did actually hear that the actor who did the original Emperor was a woman. I don't know if that's correct, if I'm remembering it correctly, but... Um... And the thing that, from those Star Wars movies, we're geeking out here, but then again, look at the shirt I'm wearing. Uh, the thing that really angered me when they brought out the new versions was when Han Solo didn't shoot first. Because we know in the original movie, basically, Greedo's there, ready to take him in. He doesn't really have a way out. Han Solo is a pretty ruthless bounty hunter and oh sorry smuggler I should say and so he just he knows that he's, he knows that he's he hasn't got an easy way out with uh, Greedo so he takes the opportunity and shoots him under the table now uh, Lucas had real issues with this because he felt like you know that was murder it was cold-blooded murder he wasn't defending himself he just shot the guy under the table He's like, this is our star. We can't have our star being so ruthless. So he changed it and did the little superimposition thing where Greedo shot, went to go shoot him in the head. He dodged his head and then he shot him under the table. Now, um, I have an attitude about that, that part of the Star Wars films are that you they begin with Han Solo as this kind of, money-hungry, ruthless person who, you know, isn't a particularly nice person. He's, you know, he's doing the stuff, but he's doing everything for money. He's, you know, that's the only reason he's there. And throughout the film, he actually improves. He becomes a better person. He, uh, um, you know, and so I know, the idea of it's hit, the film starting off with him actually shooting Greedo like that in a cold-blooded way, it fits with his character, the sort of person that he was. Throughout the Star Wars films, he, he improves. He, he becomes a better person. That's part of the journey of the film. So that's one of my pet peeves about that film. Um, I really, really um, get annoyed by that change. Crazy Tech Reviews. Didn't know you were streaming today. Well, I am. So there you go. And you, I haven't even got to putting the new caps on yet, so you're fine. Um... Adding Jabba to, uh, yeah, adding Jabba to four. It, it, it should never, ever have been there. It was cut out for a reason. I mean, they, there, were two, there were two reasons why it got cut out. First of all, uh, Lucas wanted to be able to spend more money on Jabba. He wanted to turn Jabba into something more than just a fat dude and wearing a fur coat. Um, so he wanted to do more. But the other thing is it adds nothing to the film. You take that scene out, it's... It's not like you can't figure out what's going on or something like that. It's not like there's a huge gap. We know about, you know, we know that about Jabba. We've just been told that he's, you know, that, that Jabba's unhappy with him and he sent out bounty hunters. Well, you don't need to see him. That's the return of the Jedi is that big moment where we have the reveal of who Jabba is um, after hearing about him in the first two movies. And it's a great reveal to have. By putting him in, right in the first movie, it, it detracts from the film. So anyhow, but, you know, let's face it, Lucas went a bit weird towards the end, didn't he? Um, you can now find episodes four, five, and six without any modifications, which, which is amazing. I know. I, 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 there's, the, there's that 4K revival thing, which Steve was telling me about before. Um, I basically, I, I don't need 4K. I just want 1080p. I want 1080p originals. So, I enjoyed Rouge One a lot. I wasn't a big fan of Rouge One. Um, I I didn't like Forrest Whitaker in it. 
I felt like he overacted terribly throughout the film. Um, I didn't like the whole scene with the tape backup. That just seems so absurd to me. Them trying to find a <laughs> tape from a gigantic tape backup. Um, yeah, the Rouge one was mediocre for me. So, yeah. Yeah, so anyhow. I know it's Rogue One, but so many people type Rouge One that that's just what I call it now. Um, uh oh, copyright strike. I have, have people here seen the um, the Family Guy, Star Wars remakes, or you know satires, parodies. They're more parodies than satires, aren't they? Um, I really enjoy them. I gotta say. Painted this on really thick here. This capacitor is going to sit on here crooked now. These are these are the last ones with the UV mask, by the way. So everyone can sort of, you know, if anyone's getting bored watching me paint, watching me Bob Ross, um, don't worry. This stage is finished. Oh, bo -bo -bo -bo. Ah. Rouge one. Rouge one. It will be forever be Rouge one to me. Um, you know that uh, was an American, American, uh, uh, that guy that does the, the movie reviews or the movie trailers. Honest trailers. That's right. Honest trailers, the YouTube channel. I love that. It's great stuff. Um, and he did an honest trailer of Rogue One. And <laughs> when he was saying how people were requesting um, Rogue One, and so many people were spelling it as Rouge One, and he just sort of it just all comes up as you know, tuk, 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 all these people saying do Rogue One, do Rogue One, and there's just so many of them it's spelt Rouge, and he just sort of says, "You guys really need to learn how to spell Rogue." <laughs> okay, right. We have prepared the surface. We are ready. I didn't do here, did I? Most traces don't look too bad. I'm not sure I ever need to do those. Let's have a look. Let's see if this looks like it needs some mask. This is the cap I always forget about. This little guy. This little guy. Uh, I'm going to do it. You know me. You know me. I don't muck around. <clears throat> Nothing done half fast. I so regularly forget caps now. I mean, I don't forget to put them on or anything like that. But I often forget to remove a cap or I forget to clean a pad or something like that. I just look around and go, oh, yeah, that's all of them. And then I just, you know, go to put the new caps on and then I get to one and go, oh, I forgot to, uh, forgot to do that one. Oh, dear. I tell you what, I'm getting really good at identifying logic boards now and knowing what computers they come from. When people do posts of uh, logic boards and they go, hey, what computer is this from? It's like, bang, I know that one. Because I'm just seeing so many of them these days. Oh, I was mentioning that uh, the person who sent this to me also sent me an L. Oh, God, that still looks like it's got solder in it. Is that the one that I checked before? Come on. Yeah, that's just going. Um, the person who sent this to me also sent me an LC3. Now, the really interesting thing with the LC3, so the LC3 is, it's got, you know, different RAM slots, different locations of RAM slots and all that sort of stuff, and VRAM and all that. 
and the LC3 is 25 megahertz, 68030. 16 megahertz was the LC2, uh, and then obviously the LC1 was a 68020 chip. So um, I don't know if anyone else has seen this. I've seen it twice now, getting an LC3 board that has a 16 megahertz 68030 chip on it. Uh, they run at 25 megahertz. They're overclocked ultimately, but rather than having a 25 megahertz CPU on them, they have a 16 megahertz CPU that's overclocked to 25, which I find really, really interesting. Um, because yeah, as I say, I've seen it more than once. Um, but the one that I have here at the moment is like that. It is 16 megahertz. It's been overclocked. Actually, that person asked me if I would overclock their LC3, and I probably should say to them, look. I can overclock it, but just keep in mind that it is already overclocked because you are running a 16 megahertz CPU on that thing. You want to over overclock it to 25. No, to 30 or something. Hmm. Okay. That's, uh... That feels like it's taking forever in a day to do that, doesn't it? Oh, well. Let's start putting some caps on here. It's proper recapping. I'm just going to hop up here and grab my capacitors from the new storage spot. Uh, uh, I dropped this the other day and some of the capacitors jumped across into the different compartments and I spent a really long time getting them back in the right compartments. I didn't do all of them and I didn't do all the little tiny ones, but I did all the main ones that I use. So for this one, we need a recapping guide. Where does one find a recapping guide? Recappermac.com.au. What a great place to start looking. Um, you will find recapping guides for quite a few computers, including the SE30. Um, I have a guide here. It's actually not the same one as the one on the website because I've made the one on the website look a bit better, but this is the one that I've got. As crappy as it is, it still works. I need one, one microfarad 50 volt and 10 47 microfarad 16 volt. That's what I'm going to use. I'm using tantalum capacitors. Yes, tantalum. <clears throat> tantalum is a mineral with one of the highest melting points of any other mineral out there. It's like two and a half thousand degrees Kelvin or something like something stupid like that or or is it just Celsius? I'm not sure. But anyhow, it's hot. Damn hot. Um this way around. This this way around. So he went his face that way. Yep, that's good. That's good. Um Tantalum is actually quite rare, and there's a possibility that in the future tantalum capacitors might get very, very expensive because they're likely to run out. It's about as rare as a uranium. So, there you go. Um, as in, it occurs in about the same quantities. My cat's getting lonely. I can hear her calling out to me at the moment. What's up? Chubby! Hello! Cat's name is Shelby. Uh, named after Carol Shelby. The, uh, the uh, racing person. The only difference is Shelby is a female cat and Carol Shelby is a male. Even though his name is Carol. Played by Matt Damon in uh, Ford vs. Ferrari. If anyone's seen that film, I enjoy that movie. Matt Damon! <clears throat> I actually quite like Matt Damon. I think he uh, seems like an alright sort of person. Um, especially seeing as uh, he apparently, he was saying in an interview that he signs more photos of the Team America puppet of him then he f signs photos of himself. And he's always quite happy to sign them. He really doesn't mind. He finds the movie hilarious. Even though he was the brunt of the joke in that movie a lot of the time, I just think that's really good sport. Good sport to be like that, don't you think? Okay. Now we get the Mega Zip Plus 100 to boot on a Macintosh SEFDHD. I can't get it to work. My SC and G4 won't recognize any external SCSI Zip CD. It's like, ah, oh, okay. 
Well, it sounds like probably termination. Do you have an internal hard drive on the SE? Uh, come on, come on! I'm missing chat. I'm missing chat. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, what's the best pizza box, Mac? That's that's a really interesting one to answer because you can look at it from different perspectives if i'm thinking about the one that i can probably do the most stuff on i would say it'd be the 475 or you know quadra 605 um because of the, the speed that it has you know you can do a lot on those and obviously you can put more ram in them and stuff like that um but obviously the original lc has some appeal because you know, it was the first of the pizza box, so I would say that I kind of like the um, the original one as well. I have an LC2. I don't have an LC1. Mike Smack Shack, thank you very much. Am I done yet? I'm not done yet. I've still got ages to go, sorry. Um, I've been talking too much and not recapping enough. That's what I do all the time. But I did give your channel a good old plug before, and I'm going to do it again now. Uh, what was the name of the winner again? I can't remember his name. Um, please remind me, Mike, the name of the, Andrew White. Was it White? Andrew White? Something like that. Edward White. Edward White. Edward White, you need to get in touch with Mike about you winning. And of course, the reason why uh, the competition was there in the first place was get some subscribers. Got up to 300 subscribers. And then had to get it giveaway. How cool is that? So um, check out Mike's uh, Mac Shack. Check out his channel. And if you are Edward White, uh, go and uh, go and claim your prize. And uh, yeah, and while you're there on that channel, please check out the video on that absolutely amazing IBM. That I can't even remember what the model number is. And for that amazing IBM that uh, Mike has and is playing around with at the moment and is, you know, sort of uh, ultimately restoring. He's getting a flip. It doesn't have a floppy drive in at the moment. He's putting one in. Um, that, uh, you know, with this six this amber plasma screen that displays 16 shades of amber uh, and is a portable computer. It's not designed as a uh, laptop, something, you know, it's, it's, it's not designed to... You run on a battery, it needs to run on mains power, but it is designed to be lugged around. So, what do we call those luggables? Um, yeah, IBM video there, that's awesome. Hey, what's going on here? Mike's not a mod, that just doesn't make any sense. Where uh, there's the uh, solidarity, the old uh, Mac Yak solidarity. There we go. Right, let's get back here, shall we? IBM Personal System 2. Model P70. There we go. It's I. You know, I'm not a big IBM fan, but I'll tell you what. I was absolutely, um, what's the word, mesmerised looking at that thing. That's awesome. Uh, okay, running Windows. Windows of it. I can't see the plus sign. It's this way. These are all plus in that direction, aren't they? Mm -mm. So this is the little cap here. That is the one that usually destroys UE8. I've mentioned him before. He usually leaks his funk out onto the board and UE8 gets upset by it. And then that's what is often the cause of video problems on these when there are leaky caps. Um, generally see posts about it a lot on Facebook. You know, people with SE30s going, oh, I'm having problems with the video, what's the cause? And of course, you know, if, you, if the board hasn't been recapped, then Recap it before you do anything. Are the caps 100% the cause of your problems? Not necessarily, but there's no point in trying to diagnose other problems when it's still got old leaky caps on it. You replace the caps first, see how it goes. If you've still got problems, then you move on to the next step in diagnostics. But uh, yeah, you've got to recap it first. Um, simple as that. Ooh, my next door neighbor's got some loud music going on at the moment. A little party. I'm going to have to buy more caps again soon. This is crazy. I should just buy more. 
they're expensive, but I uh, have another Amiga 1200 to recap. Um, I did a little Amiga 1200 video or 600 and 1200 video. Uh, just launched it yesterday about uh, the old uh, composite video mod. Um, and I did that to, incidentally, who's, oh, who's Amiga 1200 was that? I'm just trying to remember. Can't remember. Got a few here. Uh, but I have another one that I need to recap and do that mod to as well. Um, and I think that's it for the Amigas at the moment, but I've definitely been getting quite a few of the Amigas. Um, I don't, uh, I don't really use them very much. I have an Amiga 500. I've mentioned that before on the stream. I'm thinking I may even end up selling it because it's, to be honest, it's taking up space and I never really use it. I mainly bought it because I wanted to just familiarize myself with Amigas a little bit more, get to know about the workbench stuff and all those sorts of things. Put a GoTech drive in it. And I'm just sort of thinking I might end up selling it to someone who might use it more than me. Uh, but I'll probably have to sell it without the power supply because I do need the power supply for testing other people's Amigas. That'd be a bit of a dog act, wouldn't it? It's been upgraded. The RAM's been upgraded. I have so many Macs, I don't really have room for Amigas as well. Uh, I've had people contacting me asking if I do monitors again. Um, can, you, can you work on this monitor? No, I'm sorry guys, I can't do monitors. I don't have room for them. I don't have anywhere to keep them. Um, as it is, I just keep them every day, you know. My wife sort of says, when are you getting rid of all this stuff? And it's like, oh, well, uh, this one here is being picked up tomorrow, and this one's being picked up, you know, next week, and yeah, so it's all good. And then they get picked up, and then in the meantime, some more have arrived, so. Yeah. Yeah, go straight, you. Oh, that's not going straight because of the uh, the lumpy, um, what do you call it? Lots of features. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe trade it for a Newton. Oh, yeah, sure. Do you want one, Steve? I'll send you an Amiga 500. Uh, you won't be able to use a power supply, of course, because it is a 240 volt one. Yeah, it'd look good on a shelf. If I had somewhere to store it, you know, if I had somewhere to just keep it, uh, I'd be happy to have it there. But I am just drowning in stuff at the moment. I'm very happy with my collection, don't get me wrong. Um, I just have stuff that I never thought I'd be able to get hold of. Um, I'm just, it's just beige city here. I like beige. Big fan of the beige. I've got, uh, a stack of compact Macs. I'm probably going to sell some classics too because they're going for ridiculous amounts of money at the moment. I may as well cash in on some of that money. I've got uh, some recapped. I think, I think I've got... I don't think I have any spare classics, but I've got some spare classic twos. Uh, maybe get those up onto the internet and cash in on that, the crazy prices that are around at the moment. I mean, as usual, I put it up on an auction. I won't ask a ridiculous amount of buy it now. I just hope that the magic happens in auction. In auction. I've got a... Uh, I've got a 512KE. Or it's a 512K that's been upgraded to a 512KE. I've got a Mac Plus. I've got an SE. I've got an SE30. I've got a Classic. I've got a Classic 2. I've got a Color Classic. Uh, I've got uh, LC580, I've got um, 
a 2CI, a 2, uh, 2SI, LC2, LC475, um, 660AV, 610, 6100, uh, I've got a G3 desktop, got a G3 tower, I've got Quadra 700, um, got a Quadra 950, um, I've got a bunch of other ones as well, I've got a couple of 7600s, and I've got a VX, oh, sorry, 2VI, um, pretty happy with the collection I have to say, I do enjoy having all those old Macs. Okay, put him down. This is the last cap, folks. Enjoy the moment. I don't think you can. Michael, can you use a Rominator in an outbound? Uh, oh, actually, hang on. An outbound's an SE30, isn't it? It's just an SE30 guts, so you should be able to, I would have thought. But I don't know what the inside is like of an outbound, so I couldn't really tell you. Steve might be able to answer that. Steve knows more about outbound than I do. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Do you have any PCs? No, I don't. Um, no, not one. I, I look if I manage to get hold of like one of the original kind of IBM PCs, one of the very first ones, you know, the ones with the, uh, you know, sort of that, I don't know, that shape with the big jutting out bit at the front, whatever, that really doesn't describe it very well, does it? If I managed to get hold of one of those for a really cheap price, I'd grab one just from a historical perspective. I'd like to have one of those in the collection. Uh, but like these, they're going for silly money these days. I wouldn't mind an uh, IBM PC Junior as well and a couple of sidecars, but uh, again, you know, you just... These things aren't, you, you, it's very hard to just happen upon these with luck and cheaply these days. You might just get lucky if you're in the right place at the right time, but I certainly wouldn't pay a lot of money for them. Um, yep, okay, we home stretched. We're definitely on the home stretch. Just catching up on the old uh, stuff here. Yeah, um, obviously, the, the, I, I see that, um, who is it? Is it NK Morpheus is trying to. Uh, sort out the situation with booting from a zip disk now obviously when it comes to the drivers uh, there's no point in having the drivers in the system disk or the hard drive if you're trying to boot from it you know i mean ultimately it has to boot from it i have i think i have tried it before but i can't remember if i have i might try it later on today just to say oh crap i don't have any scuzzy um, zip drives i've only got i've only got usb ones i've got two usb 250 meg ones and i've got a couple of internal ones i suppose i could stick as long as they're SCSI ones, I could probably stick the internal ones into a case, I suppose, turn into an external one. Um, but yeah, I, 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 look, I'm sure I used to boot from zip disks, but I can't remember what computers I was booting on. They were probably later ones. Oh, I haven't put the uh, axials in, have I? No, no. Axials, here we go. How did they end up buried so quickly? They're underneath MISC, underneath Amiga, underneath MISC. I have lots of MISC ones here and just miscellaneous bits and pieces in them. This is the uh, this is the one with all the sound chips. Ah. See uh, let me just go on to the side view here. Over here. See these two here, these little two containers here? They're all sound chips for the Color Classic, LC575, um, LC520, um, I think 550, all of them all use the same sound chip and they all end up with problems. Well, not all, but a lot of them end up with problems with the sound chip. So I'm very, very happy to have spare sound chips now. I was searching for them for donkey's years and then finally managed to get some and bought all of them. So anyone else is looking for some now, sorry, I bought them all. Um, I let Steve buy a couple though first. I bought a batch, tested them, they worked. I said, Steve, they work. So I said to him, then you go buy how many you need and then I'll buy the rest because I'm considerate like that. Um, right, actual caps, 220, 16, 4, 70, 16. 
I'm going to replace it with a 25. And there. Just two of them. Neat and tidy. No problems there. A little bit dark in this camera, isn't it? Sorry about that. What if I bring some light here? It doesn't help much. Yeah. The zip should boot as long as it's formatted correctly. System 6 requires a special something. There you go. Um, yes, I'm, I'm sure I used to boot off zip disks. I used to have them as like emergency recovery disks and stuff like that. You just plug in and boot off a zip disk. Okay, here we are. Going to get that. Bend my pins. I always like to bend these pins as neatly as possible. Because, you know... When people are paying for this stuff, you want to make sure it looks nice. I always like to try and get the uh, polarity correct on these things, because otherwise it creates a warp in the space-time continuum, and no one wants that. And there, let's just see if we can get these pin links right. Bendy. Yeah. All right. Anyone who's watched my streams before will know that I have, have a really good knack for putting uh, the big electrolytic capacitors on around the wrong way. Don't know why, but I do. Now, where are my glasses? Where are my goggles? I need my goggles. Here we go. Oh, no, these aren't the right ones. They're the only one magnification. I need the three magnification. Goggles. Now, I can't see anything on the desk. So I can't find my solder. So let's lift them up. Mm, there it is. Here's my solder. My solder. I have very thin solder that I use for the um, uh, the recapping of the surface mount components. And then I use this thicker stuff for doing through hole components. Because I need a little bit more solder, solder for doing this stuff. There we go. Don't need any additional flux for this because I'm actually melting the solar on as I go. It has flux in the core of the solar. Anyone wants to know more about flux and soldering and how it all works, I do have a learning to solder video on my channel where I go through a lot of these uh, processes of how you can get lovely, neat and tidy joints. I'm going to be working on another video soon where I actually go through and build a kit and explain how to get that all looking nice and making sure that if you are new to soldering and you want to build a kit, that it'll work first time. Okay, that looks good. Well, that, that all looks good. It's looking good. Um, as usual, we check everything because when anything goes wrong with the recapping, the first thing you check is recapping because that's the most likely thing to have gone wrong. Even when you've been doing it for as long as I have, you still make mistakes. Um, I'm just going to get my beepity beep machine because one of the things I should always do with these is check that the uh, fuses are okay. Generally, don't have problems with the fuses on these because... They're self-healing fuses, so even if they pop, they come back again. Beep. But they're all right. Oh, there's one more here. Beep. Yep, all the fuses are good. So, uh, first of all, got to check to make the, the right caps. And this one is pretty easy because there's only two different types of surface mount cap on here. There's the one microfarad 50 volt here. I'm sure let's just check that quickly. That's the one microfarad 50 volt there. I know it's a one microfarad because it's 10, 5. 5 means five zeros after the 10. So that means that this is 1 million picofarads, which is the same as one microfarad. So there we go. That's one microfarad. Yay! Uh, the 50 underneath it tells me it's 50 volts. Not all of the capacitors tell you the voltage on them. These ones do. These are Kemet capacitors, and they do put the voltage on them. It's very convenient. All the rest of the caps are 47 microfarad. 47 six zeros after it 40, 47 million picofarads which is 47 microfarads i just explained that very quickly didn't i so they're all fine polarity is right all of these ones are uh, positives facing left there so they're all fine good uh this one here that's another 47 it's around the right way 47 47 47 there we go nice um 47 47. 47. Okay, it's all of them. There should be 10 
10 of them, so I'm just going to count them now. 1, 2, 3, ah, sorry, I'm just giving you a whiplash there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. Right, I'm learning to count. Learning to count with Brancus. Um, and uh, anyone who's ever curious about on the board here, I better go back to the microscope view. If you have a look here, you'll see there are two empty pads here. It's there, labeled Y3. It's to do with this little guy here. See that there? That's an oscillator. It's a crystal oscillator there. And this board was set up so that it could either have one of these little, um, what do they call them, um, tuning fork uh, oscillators, or a surface mount oscillator here. So you can have either or. And this one's obviously got the tuning fork, probably cheaper to manufacture at the time. That's why they went with it. But it, they did allow on this board for there to be a different type of oscillator in that spot. So that's why it's empty. Um, right, testing time. Isn't this fun? So, I need to get out my SE30. This is my SE30. And this one is the customer's. Mine's over here. I'll just put here in my board storage for the time being. Uh, right. Let's have a look here. So, oh, there's been a bit of chat going on here. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it may not be the same pin out as a Romanator. Yes, I, 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 yeah, I, you don't know. That was uh, and well, it's worked plus an SE machines. Yeah, okay. So do, do, do. obviously, if it's a plus or an SE, then I don't, they don't have a ROM slot on them at all. So uh, the ROMs are removable; they're in sockets. But uh, can you hook up a SCSI to SD drive to a PC in out port? I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think so. What's a PC in output next to the printer port? Uh, yes, yes, that's that's quite correct. Um, uh, SCSI was never really on PCs. I mean, later on you could get um, SCSI cards for PCs, but uh, out of the box they they never had them. So. Oscillator's going to oscillate. Sure is. Uh, you can work with both SCSI and PC parallel. The vast majority of ZIP basically. Uh, I've got one that works with. I've got one that works with USB or PCMCIA. How stupid is that? USB is great, but. Um, IBM used SCSI extensively in their PS2 line. How about that? See, this is why we have these um, other minds in uh, in the, the uh, Macchiat group, because uh, when we combine all that knowledge, there ain't much we don't know. And that's certainly something I didn't know. Okay, SCSI and Parallel apparently the other next thing. Yes, yes, the machines don't like those blocks. Okay, cool. All right, let's get my old SE30. This guy here gets a bit of a workout to the point that I don't even bother doing up the screws on these anymore because I'm having to pull this apart so often to do testing. So um, this hasn't been switched on in a while, so there won't need any sort of CRT discharging. Anyone who's a bit freaked out about CRTs and discharging, jump onto my channel, have a look in the featured videos, and you will find a video about discharging a CRT. And it's, uh, it's one that's designed to teach you how to do it so that you won't kill yourself. It's a lot better to do it that way. That's what I've found anyway. Um, okay. This is my one. This is mine. Uh, I have a network card in this. This is a network card that will work in both a Mac 2SI and an SE. Uh, and as you can see, there's a little output port here. Um, and then there's the card bit down here. That card's got to come out because you have to remove any cards connected to the... Uh, um, PCI slot, PC, not PCI, PDS slot, processor direct slot. You have to remove any cards in order to get the uh, board out. You won't be able to get the board out if it's still got a card connected to it. Um, this one here, uh, because it works with an SI as well, it has a spot here for a an FPU, floating point unit, math coprocessor, uh, because the SI doesn't have a math processor built on the board. 
um, you have to, if you're going to have a math code processor, it's got to be connected to the PDS slot. For the 2SI, there were boards that had it on there. Though there is, I have one floating around here. Here it is. It's right here. This is for the 2SI. Uh, this is a board. You connect this to the PDS slot, and it has a math code processor on it right there. And then it also has a new bus slot here. So you can put this in a 2SI and then connect the new bus card to it. Very nifty little thing to have. It's meant to have a big metal bracket on it, but I didn't get that. This was sent to me by a customer to repair, so they didn't send me the bracket. I repaired it, uh, and I said, look, I think it's fine, but I can't test it because I don't have a 2SI. So he was going to sell me a 2SI because I wanted one anyway. And then I said, well, look, I'll buy the 2SI from you. You send it down to me, and then I can test this, and then I can send this back to you. Anyhow, time went by. Hey, what's going on with that 2SI? Oh, it's in storage. I've got to find it, blah, 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 blah. Then time went by, weeks went by, months went by. Eventually, I sort of said, I got a 2SI from somewhere else. Tested this out, it worked. I went back to him and I said, dude, I've tested it. The repair works, so I can send this back to you now. And he said, oh, I sold all my 2SIs. I don't need it anymore. You can keep it. So there we go. That is payment for my repair. I got to keep it. Okay. And now... This is going to someone else. Someone else in the chat. Um, okay, so. Da -da -da. Dyna, Wild, Dy Dyna Wide Glide. I, I am assuming that's a motorbike thing. Um, Bree, I'm just going to guess. Um, Nice nifty hat that could have. Yes, I've actually got two of these. I've one of the one of the SIs that I bought before had one of these already in it. So this is surplus. Uh, I've got a few SI bits. In particular, I've got two quite nice SI cases. So if anyone needs cases for an SI, let me know. I've got the whole case and the fans and everything that goes with them. Yeah, it's a Harley. Yeah. Um, I thought so. Mm, mm. Okay, all right. So this uh, this is the car that I've just taken out. What I love about this is so cute. Um, it's got a little painted white dot here, here, a little painted white dot, and there's a little painted white dot on this for it to line up with. And I just find that so quaint that the way you get the cable around the right way is by matching up a little painted white dot. Um, you you wouldn't really see see that in manufacturing today. Um, Right, so I'm unplugging. I mean, it even says in the manual, you know, make sure you put it on with the white spot in the right in the right place. I'm gonna lift this board up and out, and then I'm gonna get my big fat hand in here to unplug this power connector. Eh, eh, come out, come out, and then the speaker cable will just fall off by itself because it doesn't hold on very well like that. Here is my one. How cool is that? Bloody hell! Um, there I have got four 16s on there. I think these ones might be fours on the other. I've got four 16s on here, and then I've got four twos on here as well. Actually, they're ones, so I did check that recently. And I've recapped it, and as I've mentioned in my streams before, this is the very first board I recapped, and I made an absolute mess of it. But I have since fixed it up, because uh, I got better at it. This is the customer's board. I really should have put the RAM on it before I filled everything up on the disc. Okay. What's that adapter called? Uh, it's called a Macintosh 2SI new bus adapter. Thank you for that, because I didn't I wouldn't have known. Um, made a few different toilets. Uh, yes, because there was also one that was just basically PDS to PDS rather than PDS to Newbus. Um, uh, uh. Does anyone know if there's any software that you can run on, let's say, System 7 that will actually come up and identify, I don't know, all the RAM sims you have in the slot rather than just giving you a total RAM? You know, like the way they do on the modern Macs now, they say in slot A you've got this amount, and in slot B you've got that amount. Is does that even exist? Is it even possible to be to be done? 
just be curious to know. I'd love something under System 7 that was like Apple System Profiler. And I just don't think there's anything quite like that. You can get info. Uh, things like Mac Bench and that will give you system info. I think Tech Tool might give you system info as well. But it's not quite the same. It's not the same. Okay, just putting all this RAM in here. Sorry, this is very boring to watch. But it's it's all in the lead up. It's all that exciting moment where hopefully I'll switch this on and it'll work. We are currently on about two and a half hours of streaming now. And if I can do this in less than three, I'll be pretty happy. It doesn't look like it's on properly. Are you on properly? Maybe. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. All right. There's our ROM. There's our ROM. And there's all our RAM. Let's connect this up. I've got to connect up the speaker because obviously one of the problems these have when they have capacitor issues is they don't have any sound. So uh, if I wasn't testing this with sound, I wouldn't be properly testing to see if the recapping had worked. Um, now, incidentally, apart from that one trace repair that I did, I didn't really find any other problems. It was all pretty clean. Uh, so I'll be very curious to know if this is going to work because, um, you know, this... It, it didn't work. When the owner had it, it didn't work. Come on. Hey, man. Get in there. Yeah. Oh, I'm not at the best angle here. You get in there. You get in there. And then everyone's happy. So, let's lift him back up. I can be pretty carefree with this at the moment from an electricity point of view because this hasn't been switched on in a long time. So there's nothing charged up, no capacitors charged up. Anyone ever zapped themselves with a fully charged capacitor before? I have. Wowzers. Yikes. That's all I can say. Uh, burn myself. This is a long time ago, but I was just working on a computer that was disconnected and I just touched a high voltage capacitor that was still charged up after running it. Ouchie wama, that really hurt. Um, even when you are discharging them deliberately, so if you've got a capacitor you know has a charge in it and you're discharging it, it still scares the bejesus out of you. All right, let's connect up the keyboard so that I can potentially type things into it if it works. See, that's optimism for you. Connecting a keyboard to a computer that I don't even know. Uh-oh. I've stepped on this. Stepped on the plug. And it's one of these stupid keyboards where the cable is not separate. Come on. Let's show people my awesome metal bending skills. Get things back into the shape they're meant to be. Well, the pins are okay. It's just the outside. I need a different tool. That one looks like I might do it. There we go. Do -do -do. Will, it, will it fit in? It might just go in now. Yay! Right. 240 of the finest Australian AC volts are about to get connected up. In there. Get in. There we go. In. There we go. Right. Okay. So we're all connected up. This does have a hard drive in it that works most of the time. Um, it's. I'm pretty sure I've recapped the power supply in this one as well. So that's pretty good. Um, and we've got this board here. We're going to test it out, see if we get a chime or a bong or whatever you call it. So, dun, 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 dun. here's the moment of truth. And sad Mac chimes. Not too concerned about that. It could just be the memory. Oh, this is exactly what they were talking about. Horizontal lines and sad Mac. You know what the first thing I'm going to do is? I'm going to put different RAM in it. Because I've seen situations like this fixed just by putting different RAM in it. 
I wonder if I've got all my ones down here. I think all my ones are up in the house. I might have to go down and go up and get some. Uh, disconnect that. And I'll disconnect that. Uh. I mean, basically, this is exactly what the customer said. This is the problem they were having. Now, I haven't gone and inspected this properly. I mean, some of the things that I look out for are whether they've accidentally knocked off a component from the back of the board. I've had that happen quite a few times from people that have done their own recapping. And then we're, we're, they're working on the board, they knock off a component. So I'll just see if it looks like there are any missing from here. We did see that we had a damaged trace. We repaired that. There wasn't a lot of gunk on the board, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it from a cleaning perspective. Um, the biggest thing I would be concerned about at this stage is the RAM. So we are going to do something about that. Okay, um, well, I'll, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these ones here, and I'll just run from these ones. So we'll just have four in here rather than the all eight sims. I have to take these out again. I hate doing it. The sky is falling. Does the 2SI and Mac SC use the same SCSI drive? I mean, you're talking about capacities or brands or something like that. If you're talking about just the connector, yeah. I mean, all of them, all of those early ones use the same SCSI drive. Oh, I hate these. I hate these. Okay, so I'd love to know what these are, these RAM sims are, because they're Southland Microsystems. They're coming out. I'm just going to try these four. What are these ones? These are 50. These are fast. 50 nanosecond. Normally on these ones you'd see like an 80 or something. I'm going to put some slower ones in just for testing. So out comes the RAM. Look at split. Uh, I have to pop up to the house to get my one megabyte RAM sims because I'm pretty sure I took them up there. Um, so, or unless they're here. Oh! Ooh, old man noises. Ouch! Yep, I'm pretty sure they're up there. So, just give me a moment. I'll be right back. They're not far away. So, back soon. <laughs> wasn't too bad was it okay so this is my little bag of one megabyte sims that I've got here I'm going to try and find some that I think will be suitable for this computer uh, what do we got here that's uh, 100 down a second I don't know what that is I, I don't know I don't know I like to tr as much as possible try and put ones that match in there I don't think I have ones that match. 
Um, got those ones. Okay. Those ones. Those ones. At least I've got those two match and those match. There we go. They're 80 nanosecond. What are these ones? They're 80. Oh, good. So I've got four 80s. I'll put those in. All right. Let's try, shall I? Uh, there are eight slots on here. You need to have uh, matching fours, groups of four. Um, so I'm going to load up this first four with ones, and I will keep the rest vacant, which should give this computer four megabytes of RAM. There's no onboard RAM on these. Zero. Zilch. None. Will not start unless you put some RAM on it. So we've got our four megs. And then if this still doesn't work, the next step will be to have a bit of an inspection. Ugh. I'm not even going to bother plugging all the other stuff in because I'm less confident now. Um, plug it in. Switch it on. See, no chime at all. I mean, it didn't even get a chime and then a sad match. So went straight into the to the times of death and into the, the lines there. So we have greater problems here. We may not necessarily get to all of them in this live stream, but we will have another look at this board. Um, we've got we've got ourselves some problems. Uh, it's faster if the number is smaller or larger. It's faster if the number is smaller. So if you're if you've got a ten, or it's, unless you're talking about a ten, ten's a hundred. You know, eighty. If it's got dash ten, it's usually telling you it's a hundred nanosecond. If it's dash eighty, it's telling you it's eighty. As that number then goes down, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, whatever, the smaller the number, the faster it is. But it, that doesn't then mean 10 is the fastest because 10 is actually 100. It's a really weird system. Don't ask me why they do it that way. It's dumb. Right, let's see if we can find any obvious damage on this board. Um, I would be most likely looking around the area of the recapping because this did work until the person recapped it. So it is probably going to be a problem that, that has occurred by them doing the recapping. Some sort of damage they've accidentally done. Um, easy enough to happen. Um, um, and as I said before, I didn't really... See, there are often problems with these guys here. These little chips here. And trace breaks and stuff like that. But these really don't look bad at all. Um, you often see huge amounts of corrosion around here, and it's just not like that at all. Um, and we can just do a couple of little beepity beep tests here. Beep. Seriously? Yeah, that's all right. Come on. I'm not surprised. I really didn't think I'd have any problems there. Uh, looking, 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 and I may not. Uh, I may not do the whole diagnosis on live stream here because it is a fairly slow process. I go through a whole series of things. First is a visual inspection, uh, like this, just flat, straight up and down, having a look at it, seeing if, if we can find any problems. Had an interesting one I worked on the other day where there was a big crack in one of the pins here. Um, and so the pin wasn't making proper contact, so I had to sort of bridge that together. Uh, so yeah, as I say, just looking for those sorts of problems, and as I say, as much as possible, looking for problems around the region of the recapping. Um, Yes, yes, this, this is true. I did have some green up here on the sound chips, these, these guys here. And sound chips can often be the cause of problem on these things, no doubt about that. Um, having said that, this is just surface green. I don't think there's any problem with what's under it. Um, and it wouldn't explain why it worked 
until the customer recapped it. And that sort of suggests to me more that something got, you know, damaged or whatever in the region of one of the caps. Uh, that one was okay. I remember having a good old look at that one. That's good. That's all fine. You know, we have these little areas of blackening here, but there's still copper under them, so I don't think they're actually breaking in there. No breaks, no breaks. Um, some of the things you also look out for are solder balls. Depending on how they remove the caps before they recapped, if they've done it with hot air, there's always that danger. Oh, look at that. It's bit, probably a bit of my talking spit. Lovely. Um, so I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking way too wet. So um, you know, sometimes if you're removing caps with hot air station, it can squeeze out little solder balls from some of the old joints, and then you can end up in a situation where a solder ball gets lodged somewhere, somewhere where it's not meant to be. And I had an interesting problem with an SE30 just recently, uh, which I will check for as well. And that was where some solder had blobbed out of the uh, underside of the board and joined together. It's an interesting one. So let's have a look on the underside. I've had a pretty good look at that side. Um, just saw a crack with maybe just my phone screen. Where'd you see a crack? Where'd you see a crack, Doc? We'll come back to that. I'm going to pop over to the other side of the board now. The, uh, what would we call this? So the, this is the reverse side, I suppose. The other side would, we would call the obverse. Obverse and reverse. For anyone who's into a bit of numismatics. All right, so we're looking around. We're looking around for damage. We're looking around, looking around, looking around. Sorry. Focus. Right. Just looking at the chatter going on with my uh, <laughs> Macchiac friends. See, they just they just keep their chatter going while I'm doing my live stream. So rude. Uh, I'm joking, of course. Just looking for anything that might look odd or missing or unhappy. Stupid SE thirties. Stupid SE thirties. Scream out if you see anything. I love it when you do find things, you know, it's very rewarding when you've had a computer that's been pesky and giving you all sorts of grief and then you just sort of suddenly go, oh, look, oh, I just found something. But I didn't, uh, so don't get too excited, is it? What's going on here? That's interesting, isn't it? Someone's had a good old gouge at that. I don't know why. I mean, everything here appears to be. What's going on here? Is it that? What? What? Something I don't like the look of underneath that. I can't imagine it'd be a problem. It looks like that's out of the factory like that. Because it's got a component adhesive under it. 
but it looks like someone stuffed something up. And look, they're, they're here as well. Looks like someone's had a go at that too. Has someone gone and replaced all of these or something? Surely not. I'm so confused. Okay, I'm just going to finish looking at that board. And then I want to take that component off because it's just weirding me out. Weirding me out. Um, okay, looking, 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 looking. What is going on here? Why does it look like people have been fiddling with this? Just don't know what's going on. It doesn't look like anything has fallen off or been knocked off. But I am so freaking weirded out by that one component. I'm going to whip it off and have a look under it. I just... You're not meant to have big gouges out of things like that. Just not. It's not how it's done. Little Mr. A3L. Okay. Let's just whip him off and have a look. Got some focus issues here. There we go. Issues resolved. Now, this is the thing that I'm really confused about. I'm going to look at the underside of this. Oh, well, it all looks fine. I don't know, it was just... It just looked weird to me. Did it look weird to anyone else? I'll need to go back and watch the video again. I think I'm just getting paranoid. Bruce is just getting paranoid. That's what this stream should be called. Bruce gets paranoid. Oh, I'm going to put this back on. This is how I do, oh geez, it's a lot of salt, right? never mind, it'll be fine. This is how I do the surface mount components as opposed to, well, the surface mount components. Um, I'm going to flip this over, make sure there's plenty of flux. And then I'm going to use my hot air to put that back on. Come on. There we go. It's around the wrong way. Come on. Ugh. Freezes get sticky with the flux. There we go. There we go. No, we don't. There we do. Going to slow down the air a little bit so I don't blow it to kingdom come. And just going to melt and make sure he's sitting comfortably. There we go, you'll do. That's an awful lot of solder on that. Look at that. <laughs> Never mind, at least it's neat. Nice little blobs. Right, so we didn't find anything really untoward on the underside. Apart from the fact that that, that one component just freaked me out. Um, but, you know, and, and that little 
chunk taken out of the board. I just don't like chunks being taken out of the board. Um, I'm going to keep looking around on this board, finding something. I'll just get rid of my little solder ball from here. Looking for damaged traces. That was, there was a bit of green on that too. Let's just check to see if that's joined up. Probably wouldn't have any effect on this, so this will probably only affect the, the battery. That's okay, that's joined. Video! Super yo! Right, so the other thing that I often do with these is I do an angle check. That's why I do this. The syringe seems mighty low on flux. Yes, I know! I was talking about this before. I, um, I got a notification the other day from Amazon that apparently my order has gone missing. And it has been long enough now that I can actually apply for uh, a refund. But I've just contacted the seller first to say, Guys, where's the flux? I'm getting desperate. Can I have some flux, please? Oh, I've got some good old gunk in there. Look at that. Scunge. There are lots and lots and lots of things that I go through and check with these things. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them on this live stream because I am trying to keep this to three hours and we are hitting the three hour mark in around about two minutes. So for those who have been watching all that time, congratulations. And thank you. Oh. <sighs> Uh, oh, thank you, Jay, for doing the little advertising. I do appreciate it. Never either, Bruce. What, what the hell, man? Yeah. So it was interesting. I bought it from a U.S. supplier. I thought it was a U.S. supplier anyway. And then, of course, the notification was saying it was having to come from Hong Kong. Now I don't know if it was doing a stopover in Hong Kong or whether it was the actual product was in Hong Kong. But um, of course, relations between Australia and China haven't been that too crash hot lately. So, who knows? And I think Amtech is a US company, isn't it? I could be wrong. Where are you? VLSI. What does that stand for? Does anyone know what VLSI stands for? Hmm. Little bits of uh, solar float around here. Just floating around. I don't want to look at that. This is why I do this on the side. You do end up often seeing a lot of things you don't normally see. I know the view is not particularly good for you guys. It goes a little, the camera always goes a bit funny when I put it on its side like this, but it is necessary. Oh, thank you very much, Grudy. I'm pleased to hear the bikes are all sorted. Five hours minimum for the phrase. Uh, always testing battery backups. Okay, well, I'll try and keep going for as long as I can. I will try and keep going until I fix this thing. I may end up taking this component off because I'm just not at all happy about the little bits of solder floating around. Maybe something's under there or something. Oh, well, something's not good.
Or maybe something's under the CPU. How would that be? See, look at that. Look at that blob right there. It looks like that chip, that CPU has uh, been heated up at some stage. What's going on? Wouldn't it suck having to take this off? I won't, but imagine how annoying that would be having to take the CPU off. Do, do, do. Sorry, folks. I know this is really, really tedious, but it does need to be done. Most of the time, when I have problems with these, I find the problem with my oh, with my eyes. Anyone else see that? Oh no, you can't. Have a look at that. I just want everyone to take a good old light while to take that in and enjoy it. Have uh, have a few moments. It's it is definitely a dun 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 moment, isn't it? Dun dun dun. So let's just go through a little bit of diagnostic work here, shall we? I'm going to grab my multimeter and I'm going to check and see if there's actually a uh, a bridge between these two pins. Oh, there is. Those two pins are touching and shouldn't be. Okay, now, how do I deal with this? I want to wick it away to start off with, but the concern there is that I might wick away some of the solder that's meant to be there. So I might then, once I've finished wicking, wickety whack, I might then, um, I'm, I'm, I'm out of focus with the camera again. Just gotta, I might then add some solder and just tidy up these joints, add some flux and stuff. Okay, so how did this happen? Um, when the person was soldering here, they um, um, flicked a bit of solder onto that by accident, and that's what we've ended up with. Um, I, I want lots and lots of flux here. Flux helps that solder flow. It makes it so that it's more likely to stay where it's meant to be and not travel across to you know another pin, create some sort of bridge. Uh, I might just add some new solder here. It just feels a little bit crunchy. My neighbor is, uh, I think, working on their car at the moment. So I've got the glorious sounds of a noisy four-cylinder engine coming at me at the moment. Which is just about just about the worst sound I can possibly think of. It's like, yes, you can put a noisy, really noisy muffler on the thing. Uh, it still sounds like a four-cylinder engine. I don't have anything wrong as such with four-cylinder engines. I just object to people that make theirs really, really loud and they're still gutless cars. Okay, finished doing that. I did most of that uh, without showing you on the microscope because I wasn't actually looking and realizing that you couldn't see it. Now we're going to have a nice little inspection here and check and make sure we haven't got any bridges. Is that a bridge there? Is that a bridge too far? I think it might be. Just going to... You probably can't see that very well. I'm really sorry, guys. It's really hard to hold this thing steady and make it kind of watchable. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, it definitely looks like there's still some silliness going on between the uh, second and third pin there, which you can't see. Just there. Just there. You see that? It looks like a little bridge there. So let's, uh, let's get back to you uh, sorting that out. It was the second and third, wasn't it? 
Oh. Oh. What was it that time? I can't remember. I thought it was here. Let's get some more wick on here. Got too much solder. It's looking better. I think we're good now. Okay. Silver balls. Alright, let's have another look. That looks clear now. now. Of course, if there's one, there could be more, but let's test it first, shall we? Oh yes, yes, the world has that. Um, right, so there we go. There was our dun 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 moment. Oh, it's good when we had those moments on the live streams, isn't it? I feel like we're getting somewhere. Oh man, this is annoying. Me. Can I brighten this up? Mm -mm. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, time to get this. I'm going to do this. Mm. the shortcut way just for the moment so me putting it in and out and in and out and in and out I'm just going to hang the cable out the back with the board out the back just to see if it starts without the horizontal lines vertical lines horizontal lines does anyone remember are they vertical or horizontal I think they're horizontal because it's a big difference big difference between vertical and horizontal lines when it comes to these Okay, so you won't hear a chime because I haven't connected up the speaker. Uh, and I'm just holding the board like this. And switch it on. So we won't get any chime, we won't get any nasty noises, but I'm hoping that we won't get any horizontal lines either. What's happening? That looks like we're not getting horizontal lines. So that is worthy of putting the thing back together again. <laughs> I'm going to try it with the customer's RAM because, you know, I want to send it back to them working with their RAM. Plastic. This thing's going to get a good old clean in the ultrasonic cleaner. I should mention, I think I mentioned this right at the beginning of the stream. This thing is working really well now. I had all sorts of problems after building it, but it's working really well now. I'm super happy with that, the homemade ultrasonic cleaner. And I, God, what on earth was that? I, I particularly love it when uh, someone sends me a great big board, like, uh, oh, like the Amiga 1200. I was just doing one of them the other day. It fits in here beautifully. Um, I've got all these Mac 2 boards here at the moment. They go in there. And these are... The thing is that even if I was to go out and buy a really big one of these off-the-shelf units, I still wouldn't be able to fit a Mac 2 board in it. So, it's most giant. All right. This is down to the final moment here. I'm just going to check how many people are still watching because 34. Good on you, people. Thank you very much for sticking around and keeping me company during this time. I think it's lunchtime. I think my mouth is telling me it's lunchtime. So isn't it interesting that this person sort of recapped the, this board themselves and that was the fault. The caps were probably fine. I mean, we don't know that certain, but that was the problem that we had. So if they, if it was, a, if they hadn't dropped that little bit of solder on, on those pins, it probably would have worked fine with the recapping job they did themselves. Disappointing. I, I will let, obviously let them know that that's the case because it's important that they know that, you know, they probably did recap it okay. Um, Mm, being careful here. Cap. Flip him over. We want to see this sucker boot, don't we? We want to chime and boot and things and watch software and stuff. What's a really good... Actually, this is something I've been wanting to ask the hive mind for a while. 
what is a really good long-term game that you can play on uh, like strategy type game that you can play on an old black and white nine inch screen now obviously you can play civilization one on this i have played it before in black and white it's not the most glorious experience in terms of graphics but it's still quite playable uh, it's a little bit difficult because you don't have the different color coding for all the different um, different civilizations on there they've got little icons on them to signify what they are so it's not as good in black and white but it's quite playable Warlords is another one that's quite uh, quite a good strategy game that's playable. Again, you miss out on all the colour coding of all your little characters, but it still is quite playable. Why the hell won't this go on? What am I doing wrong? Guys? Guys? Okay. Um, so, yeah, very interesting... Um, we're mostly insomniacs. Do we have much of a chance? <laughs> um, so, um, I, 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 I am so not an insomniac. It really suits me really well to have you guys being insomniacs so that you can stay up, uh, stay up with me during my time zone. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, does anyone have any recommendations? Some good strategy type games. So, ones where you can kind of sit down and play for a few hours on a game rather than just like a an arcade style game, one where you've got to go in and figure stuff out and, you know, build things, all those sorts of things, you know, like your your Warcraft, Starcraft, not World of Warcraft, but your original like Warcraft, Starcraft, um, Civilization, you know, Sims, I guess Sim City, that sort of thing. Can anyone recommend some good ones that will run on these old nine inch black and white compact Macs in a in a playable way? Just curious. If you're someone watching this stream not live, you're watching it later on, please feel free to put something like that in the comments. <clears throat> um, okay. I've got sound connected, I've got SCSI, I've got floppy connected. I probably didn't need to connect it to floppy because I'm not even going to try the floppy. Because it's it's my floppy. It's not theirs. Um, and now, now's the time for the confidence. Plugging that keyboard cable in all in readiness okay there's going to be flicker we know there's going to be flicker and that's because of the whole issue with the uh refresh rate in this and the camera i can go up there and match it um but it takes time and i'm not sure anyone can really be bothered we'll see we'll see see what happens okay three two one and there's a shine da -da -da, da -da -da. um and i've now got a screen just waiting for a cursor. There's a cursor. And there's a happy, smiling Mac. Yay. Um, I rate Zork. Okay, Zork. I've got to get into Zork. I've got to do that. That's the, like the original Zork. What, it's just called Zork? Is it, or is it, you know, Escape to Zork or Zork up a tree? or um, How would you rate this live stream? <laughs> So there's uh, Dana does stuff, um, just making a little bit of a joke of one of the topics that we had on MacYak yesterday, where we we're talking about how everyone is required to rate things these days. You know, how what was how was the quality of your Skype call? Um, rating uh, sellers, rating you know buyers, you know just all the time. You know, even technic technical support. Hello, would you, would you mind staying on the line and and giving a rating of this call? You know that sort of thing. It just drives me bananas. And just rating everything. And of course, as we were saying last night, who's looking at the numbers? I mean, you know, it's like, you know that basically what's happening, this is what I think is happening with something like Skype. There would just be a general average level of rating they would get all the time. If that rating level drops down below a certain amount, that might trigger the admin people to say, oh, is there a problem with it or something like that? So... Um, all right, now I've got a mouse. Here's a mouse. Hello, mousey. Um, okay, it bombed. It bombed. Um, okay, thank you. I'm so I'm, I'm very pleased that this is done. This is um, quite pleasing. The other one I said I have for them is an LC2. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to wrap this stream up in a moment. 
anyone who's looking at the geometry at this and seeing the screen is all the way out to the edges, the Macs aren't actually meant to be like that. There's meant to be a little bit of a black bit around the edges. I have mine this way because, just because. Uh, Zork is the original. Return of Zork is the second, so it's just Zork. Cool. Um, uh, rating a doctor's appointment. Yeah. Zork 1, Zork 2, Zork 3, Beyond Zork, Zork 0, Return to Zork. Wow. Uh, it's a graphic adventure unlike all the others that were text adventures. So the original Zork is a text adventure, yeah? It's those ones where it's like, you know, um, pick up staff, that sort of thing. And, you know, turn left, you know, walk east, that sort of type game, I assume. The original Zork, that's how it is. I have to give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. I do like a bit of graphics with them. Um, let's just see what we have on this. This is my SE30 hard drive. See if I've got anything of interest on here while we're here. Uh, I certainly don't have any private files or anything like that because it's not that sort. Applications, there we go. I've got a bit of Quark Express on this. Oh, let's see how much RAM that person had. About this Macintosh. Uh, what have I got? Eight. Oh, are you serious? They were all just ones. How disappointing. <clears throat> uh, those ones with the sideways chips, I th was was sure they were going to be like fours or sixteens or something like that, but they're only four. They're a bit small to be sixteens, but they're only ones. Oh well, never mind. Eight's better than nothing. If you own an SE30 and you're running this with any less than eight megabytes, have a good hard look at yourself. Go and get some RAM for these things. At the very least, eight megabytes of RAM. Um, Return to Zork. Was Return to Zork like a black and white graphical adventure or a color one? I mean, can you play Return to Zork on this? Uh, Populous? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so... Studio session, remember that? Does everyone remember Studio Session? I think this is yeah, this is Super Studio Session. So this doesn't have that tape. If anyone has ever seen Studio Session, the original one, it used to have an interface with a tape player, the cassette player at the front. And then it had a music composer as well. This one now only has the um, this only has the composer, it doesn't have the player. I love the player. Oh man, when I used to play that. There was another app I used to use at the time called Music Works. So let's just load up a song on this and we'll have a, a bit of a crack at it. Um, what's the, Chuck Roast was one of the ones. There was a, one called Chuck Roast, I think. Oh, wait, that was always a bit of fun. Come on, songs. What is going on here? Oh, I think I'm pressing the keyboard down. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Chuck Roast, here we go. Get ready for musical... Delight. Beautiful music. Ready? Hang on. Uh, oh, guitar solo. Copyright content match. I doubt it. It'd be funny if it was, though, wouldn't it? So, yeah, that's Studio Session. Uh, good fun there. I mean, in particular, because it has uh, quite a good music composer on it and lots of instruments and stuff that you can set it up to play. And, you know, you can program your own songs in if you are musically inclined. Uh, what else we got on here? I won't fire. Um, Quark might run on this. Let's see. I know I used to run Quark on an old, on an old, um, I think I even ran it on a plus to be honest. So I think it'll even run on four megs of RAM. Yeah, look at that. That's where I used to work. That company doesn't exist anymore. So I really don't need to hide it. Um, yeah, there we go. That's Quark Express. The stuff you can do on this is amazing. I mean, this Quark Express version 3.1 from back then is still better than Microsoft Word of today. <clears throat> um, and let's have a quick look at games and then we'll wrap things up. Oh, games. Prince of Persia <laughs> in a Stuffed file. 
Uh, could not be opened because the application... Oh, come on. Application program. Close. Close. Uh, I've got stuff on this for surely, surely. There we go. Stuff and expander. Get your act together, Mac. Uh, has been corrupted. May not be valid. Do you want to continue working with it? Yes, it's probably stuff. I'm not, you know, waste of time. But. <clears throat> Did it work? No, it didn't work. It didn't work. Sorry, Prince of Persia is not on here. But I do have Shuffle Pack Cafe, so we can at least do that. Good chat. It's really quiet. I need to turn the volume up. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so one thing I can tell you when you're playing this game is... Uh, which one is it? This The general at the table, I think he's really difficult from memory. He's the one with the ear that spins around. This guy's pretty easy, the little drunk alien. Uh, this little guy, is, he's the easiest. He's hopeless. Uh, I used to play with this guy a lot because I was fairly on par with this guy in terms of my ability. There wouldn't be any more. Well, let's just play the drunk alien, shall we? Oh, have you ever tried to play this sideways? It's not easy. <laughs> uh. Crap. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's sort this out. Hang on. Let me go around. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, how do I get the menu? Does anyone know? How? Hey, there we go. Paddle. Size. Uh, how about there? Set it. There we go. Let's continue. <laughs> Come on. Come on, let me get a point. Just one. I'm losing my... Uh, it's so big that I've lost my ability to actually put some spin on it. Oh, well. Yeah, all about the cheats. That's me. Okay, uh, so I'm going to quit out of this and I'm going to get ready to sign off. So uh, thank you to everyone who has stayed around and enjoyed a little bit of Mac compact Mac fun. Uh, we got there in the end. It was, certainly wasn't the easiest of repairs, but uh, we did get there in the end. And thankfully, the repair... Oops, I meant to restart. I went to shut down. The um, repair, the problem was one of those problems that actually jumps out and says, look at me, rather than being something a little bit more hard to see. But I'm usually looking for that sort of thing under these circumstances. The circumstances being that the computer worked until it was recapped. So... Thank you uh, to everyone. Steve, what time are you starting your stream? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, yep, let me just uh, do the whole thing here. Thank you to everyone for all the super chats. I got a whole stack of them today. I really appreciate that. It makes it, uh, it definitely makes it uh, a, a sort of a, a, a more rewarding experience for me. It's not what I expect, but it is always appreciated when people do it. So, a big thank you to everyone who did do the super chats. Um, and, um, thank you to all of my, uh, uh, Machiac, uh, sort of friends that have been on here today. Um, fool me twice. <laughs> uh, dear. Yes. Well, I know the quote you're all doing. Uh, um, okay. You may need to use res edit to do what? Sorry. What was, I can't even remember what I was asking. You may need to use res edit. Oh, you mean on that? that um stuff it plug in thingy yeah it's it's it is actually corrupt i've i know i've done it before that's why it's still a, a stuff it file and not expanded so 
Um, thank you, gang. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for keeping me company. Thanks for the super chats. Uh, thanks for your uh, enjoyable conversation. And thanks for all the uh, game hints and everything, the, the stuff I'm about to go and load Zork and have a bit of a play. So um, I will say... Uh, I will say goodbye to you all. Have it. Oh, jeez. I'm not even on the right camera. There we go. That's a hee hee. Um, I will say goodbye to you all. Um, thank you very much for joining me, and I will hopefully see you at the next one. Bye now.